There are over 1,000 UFO sightings reported around the world every month. 90% of these sightings can be explained, but 10% cannot. But officially and unofficially, the U.S. government has been investigating UFOs since 1947. Their top secret goal is to find out what's behind these unexplained sightings. The Pentagon classifies these as unusual airborne anomalies. But a better term is X-Files. Join us as Mac, Juan Juan, and Commander Cobra explore these unsolved cases. UFO incidents that even baffle the U.S. military. This is Mac Maloney's Military X-Files. And now, here's Mac Maloney. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. We have a very exciting show for you tonight, but first, let me introduce the boxing. 16th week in a row? I think it might be 15. 15? Okay. Yeah. Right. We skipped last week, so maybe right. that's what screwed yeah. up my math. Anyway, uh, but Juan Juan is here in mm-hmm. person at least 15, yes, ye- uh, 15 <laughs> years in a row. It just seems like 15 wow. years. It's been so much fun. 15 weeks in a row here in the studio, right. live and on right. time. And that's uh, before you know that happened. He was kind of absent uh, for... A couple months because he and Cobra were in this uh, yeah, secret um, mission. Secret? No, it wasn't a secret mission. It was uh, <laughs> it was a bunker envy. The bunker envy. Yeah, years. it was in the Archie bunker. That's right. And uh, I'm, I'm repainting the Archie bunker. Now. Are you really? Yeah. What? I'm, what, what color I, well, I, should I, I ask? I painted it camo, and it came out so good that I crashed right into it because I didn't see it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Hang on. It was funny. <laughs> you could never find it again. That's right. <laughs> it blended right in with my surroundings. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't know what you meant by camo at first, to say the truth. Yeah, I would have guessed chartreuse yeah. myself. Uh, holy cow. <laughs> no. There he is looking for it. Yeah, we're in trouble if I don't find it because that's half the act. Here. Okay. What are we talking about? No. <laughs> okay, that's for one. I'm painting his bunk camo. Now, have you repainted it? I had to put some white stripes through it so that I could see it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's a little sad, but it is. Anyway, one one is here. Fifteen weeks in a row. At I used least. to go down to an army base in Massachusetts. Yeah. It's it's no longer an army base, but it's in Air, Massachusetts. Yes, yes. Otherwise yeah. known as Fort Devens. Otherwise known as Fort Devens. Now it's Park Devens or something. Okay. And my brother in law was stationed there. And I would park always beside the dumpster. Which were painted camo. Right. So I'd get out of the car. So those commies won't get our trash. Is that <laughs> I'd get out of the car, and then Mrs. Juan Juan's getting out of the other side, and then go, boom! And <laughs> crash right into the dumpster. Damn, I didn't know that thing was there. I couldn't see it. It's painted camo. Okay. I couldn't see the forest for the dumpster. Yeah, right. Oh, nice. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Okay. Maybe Usually you have discipline problems, and the boys oh, yeah. have been sent out to paint the dumpster right after they paint the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> something right, yeah, right. <laughs> and when you're through with the dumpster, you can start on the rocks again. Okay. Unbelievable. So one, one, 15 weeks here in yep. a row, yeah, blah, 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 painting mm-hmm. the bunker, bunker, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You got yeah. everything covered? Everything's good. Because oh, you know listen who. Listen to Sergeant Pepper. Thank you very much. Oh, right, okay, okay. yep. Mm-hmm. Borrow it. I'm going to buy my own copy. Someone uh, gave me a uh, slightly unauthorized version of the new Sgt. Pepper album. I'm going to buy my own. Too, really? That was truth. unauthorized? Yeah. Well, it's a long story. I'll just show okay. um, but It sounded good. You it sounded un- great, yeah. Unauthorized yeah. version sound crappy. Well, unauthorized and that wasn't right. paid for. So. Got it. Do you really have to give me the full, uh, the third all, degree here? No. That's, I was, what a great to- straight man, really. I, totally, I know. Uh, totally appreciate Bringing it. tears to my eyes. Oh, all I can need now is like Apple lawyers on my case. <laughs> It sounds very good. Everyone should go out and buy their own copy. But it, if, if you get a letter Sergeant from Peppers, Yoko Ono, then you yeah. know you're in trouble. Oh, brother. Oh, yeah. Um, Uh-oh, it's Yoko. You know, uh, why aren't you being a little too hard on her? The no, one, one? No? No. Hmm? Yeah, that's what Mrs. Cleaver used to say to Oh. <laughs> Come on, say it. Say it. So, Jeff, I'll have something to do. Weren't you a little bit... Weren't you too hard on the beaver last night? Weren't you a little tough on the beaver oh, last tough night? On the beaver. Oh, right. oh, by mistake. <laughs> by mistake, one, one. I'm sorry. Anyway, chomping at the bit to be introduced. 
And that's why I was giving you the hurry sign. Now. Okay. Commander Cobra is here in the disclosed location, one studio over from us. Behind the bulletproof glass. Good evening, gentlemen. Salute, Randy. <laughs> Two keys. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Dan. Salute him. We, uh, Juan Juan and I, had our own uh, dressing ceremony in the parking lot at the studios tonight. Directed a little bit of attention. Dressing ceremony? Is that what you're saying? Yes, saluting and doing our facing maneuvers out there in the parking lot. Also, could have been those magic golf clubs I brought in for you. That could have brought We're we're lining up in the magistrate line and holding a... Shouldering the shouldering the golf clubs like they were weapons. It was it was fun. We were we were juvenile delinquents waiting for you to open up the studio. Um, you know, I appreciate the golf clubs, but don't do that stuff anymore in the parking lot. All right, I'm the guy with the key. What did Pete say in last week's show that he's been getting reports of people acting strange? Well, you, you thought you were getting reports. Wait till you get this week's report. <laughs> Did you upset Gumdrop's owner by any chance? Uh, no. Okay, good. All right, didn't then. see her. All is forgiven. It'd be great if she was out looking at you guys, though. <laughs> anyway, two inside. Uh, so we have an interesting show tonight because we're going to be talking to Rob Beckhausen about two of the craziest weapon systems you can uh, imagine. And one of them, I think I have a lawsuit against ISIS. Because ISIS actually stole an idea from a book I wrote more than 12 years ago. What? How about that? Well, you know that they're really yeah. dedicated bands to, to the whole trademark uh, patent thing. They're okay. really, really up on that. See, that's him laughing at me. But you'll see. You'll see, Cobra. And you will. I'll show you the evidence, and you will agree. I already know what you're going, and With I me. agree. Oh, you do? Okay. Right. thought you are being sarcastic. Anyway. I was being sarcastic. Okay, that's so, the so you're really going after the, the king cheese of ISIS? Yes, I am. Me well, and my lawyers. Yes, we are. Anyway, right. so that's that a tease for that. in court. Um, with the U.S. with the U.S. and the and the coalition blowing up their money, you better get in there quick. I'm, hey, you know it. <laughs> uh, also, um, Switchblade is going to give us his full report tonight about this uh, strange occurrence that happened a few years ago out in Washington State, where people started seeing a rash of Bigfoot sightings and also a rash of UFO sightings, mm. and we're always on the lookout for those because sometimes we've talked on the show about how maybe ghosts and Bigfoot and UFOs and Loch Ness Monster, maybe all this crazy stuff that people see is all part of the same thing. It's kind of cool. So Switch will be joining us. Um, <clears throat> now, we speak about lawyers. Um, you might not know this one, one, but uh, we had a um, legal agreement between Cobra and I over the sound effects machine. Have yes. You, you know, were you following that? Cobra, is okay with you if I just read a little bit of the legalese here? You got the yes, terms, go right you got the terms and conditions there? And then burned my <laughs> copy of it as I took my sworn oath. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, uh, legal agreement with Cobra on the sound effects. He has a sound effects machine. I have a sound effects machine. He gave machine. me one. And he gave you but one. But I don't dare bring it into See, the studio. You're, thank you, Juan Juan. I, I appreciate I that. I already know my place. Your loyalty <laughs> will not go unrewarded, my friend. <laughs> anyway, In this life or the next. I use it at home all the time. <laughs> yes. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I do. Okay, another show. Mrs. Juan Juan loves it. That's right. See, another show. I'm always giving myself a rim shot. Back to... Oh! Hold on. Where'd it go? (laughs) Oh! Boy, I'll tell you. If that isn't the opening to Mac after die. (laughs) Anyway. I thought that was impossible to do. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So anyway, um, Cobra's lawyers got a hold of my lawyer and said, okay, we're going to work this out. Okay? Right. Cobra obviously has like ex military lawyers. Mm-hmm. My lawyer is the guy who, you know, poured the foundation for my house. Okay. Also, also get, takes care of DUIs. And I was going to say, I get really good Mordella cheese from him. Thank you, Cobra, for jumping on the bit. What kind of cheese? Mozzarella. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. you said Mordella. I did. <laughs> I was mixed up. Some, Ita- a rim some shot. Italian you are. If yeah. you don't know how to do it, one one will show you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, you know, we got to do a show on a segment on. I told you how it turns out Lois Lane is actually not Irish. I haven't told you that story. No. Yes. 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 Yeah. From that the, would make uh, an interesting from the segment. extreme western part of Europe, right? Uh, next to no, Spain, right? No, no, no. Nah, yeah, I guess it's next to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to quiz you on the geography, Dorchester. But no, I, yeah. <laughs> right, right next to Spain and bordered yeah. by the Atlantic Ocean, but yeah. I may be wrong. It's the boot, the boot shaped okay. country in yeah. the Mediterranean for some reason. That she looks like she should be on a poster for the Irish Tourist Board, doesn't she? Doesn't she kind of look yeah, like? Yeah, absolutely. And her maiden name was Kennedy. I shouldn't probably say yeah, that. So you know, it all kind of fits. Turns out no. She's no. Turns, last name is Giovanni. Uh, Dante Giovanni was a great grandfather. Wow. Mm. 
explains the excellent meatballs and spaghetti and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. it really does. Yeah. It doesn't explain why the corned beef and cabbage is good on St. Patrick's Day, though. But yeah, <laughs> it's funny. she could be just a good cook, but that right, would that's true. But it. you know, that wouldn't be. Why as go funny. for the simple yeah. explanation? That wouldn't be funny. Oh, uh, racist. So. I need to have a sample because on my mother's side, the name was Catania from Charlestown. Hmm. So. Oh, she was in a the minority there, my friend. Right? Mm. Go ahead. I know you would think, but so what are you? One quarter. I am uh, half Italian, half half Filipino. Oh, okay. All right. It explains a few things. Yeah. Um, it does? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Ex explain it to me then. The, uh, and it turns out that Lois Lane, her other half, is German. Is German, you know? Yeah. So, which is good. Which is good in a way. Because it's a good it, balance. It keeps everything in order. You know That's what right. I mean? Yep. You know? And I said to her the other night, just having me time, I says, you know, this. what's good is that you're, you know, your half German comes out at the right time. She goes, well, you're Irish all the time. <laughs> <laughs> As you're holding a beer. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, the, uh, the legal document basically says, i got to read it on the air, uh, part of the agreement. Use that Latin term, okay. verbatim. Verbatim, is that what that means? Okay, it begins, Commander Cobra has been a principal part of the Macaloni show, blah, 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 legally stuff, right? So he's allowed to do two sound effects a show, okay? But they cannot be... Cobra is? Yes. Oh. But they cannot be... In any way, imitate Mac's signature rim shot. Boom. Sounds filthy. The but incessant rim shot. Right. Incessant? Incessant sometimes. What are you trying to say there, one It's We all, overplay it? All rim shots all the time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Whatever. Okay. Now, the second. You know, I didn't understand the bulletproof glass, but I'm starting to get a feeling for it. I'm starting to get a certain sense for it right now. Well, let's the, bring Cobra in the same also, room. Also, I'd here. like to uh, add that my lawyer is attempting to uh, allow me to save up my sound effects. So if oh, I do not see? do any sound effects you can for this show, this is called I would sound have... effect carryover. No, this carryover. is what's wrong That's with correct. the country today. Is these friggin' lawyers are just you know they're never no. satisfied. Can yeah. Cobra choose when he uses them? It said said yeah. some voice from the yeah, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Sound like the ghost of JFK, actually. Yeah. Or Jack Nicholson. Is Jack Nicholson here? Right. Right. I just want to know the terms and conditions. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. And what was uh, <laughs> the ghost of JFK? He had a he had a, a phrase that he was always. Uh, what's his brand? <laughs> his brand. Where? <laughs> Where are the broads? There you go. Okay. Now we're off to a good. <laughs> okay. Just get a little serious now. I was reading. This in the New York Post the other day, and it's really kind of freaky when you think about it. <clears throat> um, you know, about a year ago, they turned the Hubble telescope out to the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is like an asteroid belt out near Neptune. Yeah. There's one near Mars, a small one, and then this one is out near Neptune, way the hell out there. And they were looking for somewhere for a, a um, you know, one of those voyages that it just went by. You know, I don't want to say Uranus, but yeah, I guess it did. <laughs> That's my favorite planet. They make the you know. Here it comes! Wow! Yeah. And they were looking for a good place to direct it to. Right. So, so they they were looking at this um, object in the Kuiper Belt, and it gets into this whole thing: which way the objects in the Kuiper Belt are pointing. If they point towards the sun, that's the way they're supposed to. Yeah. But they found a bunch of them that were pointing in the opposite direction. <clears throat> so they said, "Well, there must be something massive out there, like like." Bigger than a planet, yeah. even, okay? So why don't we kind of steer this thing towards it? So they were doing that. So they went through all this about a year ago. I guess it was in the paper. They they called it Planet X. They thought they had found Planet X. So now they're getting ready to actually aim this thing. They go back out there with the Hubble, and there's two things out there. One of them wasn't there a year ago. Ooh. Size of a planet. Wow. Okay? What can that be? If it wasn't Don't, there no. a year ago, if it's not a planet would be there for millions and millions of years, and they think if they found Planet X, it would have been there. But for one of these, other, another of these things, can just kind of show up out there. It reminds me of one we could were doing. Could it split off from something else? But for it to get in, I don't know, maybe. But it's a pretty big, you know, chunk of whatever mm. the size of a planet, maybe um, even bigger than the size of size of Mars, I think. Wow! And for it to suddenly appear. You know, who knows? So, of course, this guy, because as the New York Post said, you know, some people are saying they uh, remember the show we did about a year ago about the people thought they saw an alien superstructure going around a star way the hell out yes. there. It's called Hercules or something. Yeah. 
same kind of thing. People are saying, hey, maybe this is some kind of an alien thing, and here they come. I can't wait. Yeah, me neither. Come on, show yourself. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I found that kind of fascinating. So another thing to worry about in these days. Yeah. So um, just what I needed. Yes, right. That's what we all needed. Well, listen. I'm worried about North Korea now. This, yeah. We don't talk about that, but there are plenty of ways yeah. to forget the one. I'd be more worried about um, the camouflage bunk, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> or at least but finding it again. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, that's what I meant. <laughs> How are you going to find it? No. Also, a shout out to Agent X, who had a, went under the knife today. Oh, really? Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, he's changing genders. Oh, no, okay. I'm only kidding. No, oh. no, no. He knows we kid because we like him. He's get, he uh, got a uh, his shoulder scoped, mm. shoulder scoped. Mm. Yeah, plenty of painkillers, and because he's true blue army, he's not going to use them. So he said he'd bring them in here. We could share the painkillers. Yeah. Oh, no. good. Yeah, When's gonna... he coming in tonight? <laughs> Already? Wow! The only one they want. One. No, he's recovering, man. <laughs> I think it'd be fun if we sent the, like a nurse stripogram over to him. Yeah, I think his wife. I'm fifty fifty on whether his wife would think it would be funny or not. That's she the would. thing. You think so? I think anybody married to Agent X has to have a good sense That's of humor. That's true. Yeah, very true. You don't know how true that is. Mm-hmm. I've seen him in action. <laughs> so maybe. All right, yeah. we'll tease the stripper. Who knows? Maybe we can get him as a sponsor. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So I'll tell you what. Why don't we take a commercial break now? Oh, right now. Yep. And uh, why, do you have anything else yeah, to just, say? No? I'm just huh? having so much fun, just kibitzing. Really? Here. Okay, you had a week off. What'd you do over the I was totally bored out of my mind. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mac? Yes. Mac, uh, is it possible for me to surrender my sound effects to one one during the show? We never really covered that in the negotiations. I'm not at liberty to talk about that. You'll have to. All right, we'll take that under that advice comment. and we'll bring that back to the Why, you want him table. in control of the sound effects? Is that what you mean? No, just... You said I have two per show. If I choose not to use them and I don't want to carry them over, I was thinking maybe I could loan them, give them to one one. Like when 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 our great government surrenders the floor to the gentleman from New Hampshire. I don't know if that agreement is transferable, Cobra. Of course it's not. That's what I'm working on. One. Oh, look at the big brain on you. Excellent. That was just wonderful. Once again, I see. I'm I'm seeing the conspiracy. Who wrote the terms and conditions? It was mutually agreed, right? You signed off on it. Uh, yeah, yes, oh, right. Yeah, had draft. nothing in there. No, for a Well, let's no. not get into mutuality no. complex here okay. because that's a complex statement. <clears throat> yeah, it's really. Yeah, we don't want to be complex. I right. got a feeling this is going to be another A2 one one. Is this yeah. another yeah, knife in the be. bank? It could be. This is what started before we met do- with Dr. Laura. Now we have to meet with her again. Is that right? Dr. Lira? Lira. That's what I mean, yeah. Or Lara. Or, or Lara. Whoever. I, only because I've listened to that segment so many times, you called her Dr. Lara about nine times, okay? But she forgave you. Forgave you. She did. We have to have her back on. Maybe live this time. <laughs> Maybe she'll be the one who walks in on us one one. I'll have to work on it. <laughs> oh, cow. Okay, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. I really don't know. <laughs> So why don't we take a commercial? Yeah, rim shot, self-imposed rim shot. That doesn't get any, but that one, you don't know what it means. Okay, good. That's very <laughs> contortion. What's the easiest keeping notes and She's now. in California, right? And I, I believe Mr. Nicholson threw in a uh, self-contortionist. How, oh, how nice. very special of him yeah. to just whisper that line in. <laughs> Let's take we it. have listeners in Peoria, yes. and they're not going to be happy with that, Mr. Nicholson. <laughs> I didn't hear it. And... Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we take a commercial break now? And um, we'll be right back uh, with another fascinating segment. So you're listening to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. Cobra, have anything more to add in two seconds? One? No. We'll be right back after this. Over the years, Air Force Major Hawk Hunter and his band of patriotic fighter pilots have fought tirelessly to reunite a fractured America, devastated by a Russian sneak attack. Now... Returning from a mysterious space odyssey, Hunter finds a huge Russian army occupying New York City, ready to invade the rest of America. Buzzing through the city's skyscraper canyons in a tiny top-secret ghost plane, and seeing the invaders' massive weaponry for himself, Hawk realizes he's up against the greatest danger his homeland has ever faced. But equally alarming are reports claiming that Hawk's former girlfriend, Dominique, is living with the head of the Russian secret police in a Manhattan penthouse. Is she his prisoner, or is she something else? With the woman and the country he loves in dire peril, Hawk Hunter, the wingman, will apply all his aviation prowess to launch the most crucial battle for America yet, no matter what the risks. 
filled with fast-paced action, a wide range of aircraft and military hardware, Battle for America brings back your favorite characters from earlier books in the Wingman series and delivers a riveting story. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey! Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. That reveals new insight on America's most famous hero, the Wingman. That's Wingman 18, The Battle for America. On sale now at Amazon.com and available at your local bookstore. Hi, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you are listening to Mac Maloney's Military X Files show on Distant Thunder Radio Network. Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Military X Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. In the studio with us tonight, 15 weeks in a row, one one is here. Hey, in Mac. person, just told us off air, he's trying to change his look. Okay? That's right, trying on new might glasses, be, new hat. Might be quite a mountain to climb there, might I know. Be. But it's got to be Tom Brady type of stuff. Of course. You know. Okay. If uh, Cobra, if you were going to do one of your sanctioned sound effects, I think Tom Brady would be the trigger. Could be. Okay, could be. Thank you very much. Tom's the man. Let the record show that that was not my rim shot. Oh, that's that right. Now with every, rim shot. every show has to be digitally you know, investigated to make sure who it, did it, the rim it shot. It has to be recorded, too. Right, right. recorded. We're so recording, we are we? We don't exceed <laughs> under advisement of maximum counsel, number of. When I, am, I say recorded, I am required to uh, keep okay. track of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Hey, listen. You know, you know, a big show when uh, celebrities just pop in on you, and uh, one has just popped in on us. Very famous author Mike Zapula. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Author of the um, last long showman. That's right. The last long showman. Thanks. Okay. How's everyone doing tonight? Best selling uh, book. Yeah. If and he made it a gift to my mother yes. for her birthday, which she that? loved. She gushed over it. She loved it. Okay. Very happy about that. I love hearing that. Never gets old. It's hard, it's hard to get Cobra's mother as a uh, endorsement on uh, Amazon, but I'm working on her. Okay. Yeah. I used to be a longshoreman. There's about four jokes in there that uh, we're going to let lie because we're talking about Cobra's mother. <laughs> She's an angel. Uh, anyway, anyone out there who's interested in what Boston, you know, gangsters and um, politics and so on was like before Whitey Bulger. Whitey Bulger gets all the press. Check out this book because this is what happened right before that and the years before Whitey Bulger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cool book. It's a cool book. And you're still talking to Gollywood? Is that the angle? Uh, yeah, we're still talking to people in L.A. Uh, some people actually in Boston too now have mm-hmm. uh, reached out to me, so uh, maybe I can pit wow. them against each other. That's cool. All right. Well, you know, you got to invite us to the premiere. Absolutely. Okay. And you VIP, hire the hookers. I mean, here. the uh, girls on the red uh, <laughs> carpet, right? You're responsible for them. Oh, yeah. As the writer, <laughs> you're the one responsible for all the goodies. So, Mike Zabula is going to sit in with us for a while? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I better get his autograph now because he's going to be famous. Yes. Right. Okay. Maybe we'll get the autograph on the trek down the headquarters after the show. We can, you can have his autograph on there. And <laughs> Whatever you guys need. There you go. Ooh. Love to hear that. <laughs> I'm glad that's on tape. So, also on the, uh, uh, also in the studio with us, uh, I should say, is one of our favorite guests, Phil Yebba, the UFO comedian, is here. Wow, that's quite an honor. Thank you. Yes. Don't you yes. think so? Yeah. Okay. Now, something who's having technical difficulties. He makes here. all the aliens laugh. Yes. <laughs> Without vocals, just. <laughs> Mental telepathy. I got no idea how you did that there, Mark. Famous author, Mark Zippel. Famous <laughs> author and contortionist. <laughs> right. Tripping on the headphone cable. <laughs> Phil Yebba is uh, not only a comedian, but he's an impressionist as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, we get a really nice show. Is that Ronald Reagan? I don't know. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to see. Hang on. <laughs> Too soon. And on the... Uh, Phone with us from Dallas, Texas, murder capital of the planet. <laughs> I'll say. Graveyard of beloved presidents. 
Rob Beckhausen from Dallas. How you doing? All the X's go. Right. How you doing pretty there, good. Bob? Yeah, good. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Anything new? I'm alive. Uh, mm-hmm. In Dallas? Yeah. You know, gunfire wise. Or... Oh, I was going to say, I heard uh, someone shopping for uh, new glasses. I just ordered some mm-hmm. and uh, myself. And uh, wow. you know what I noticed when I went to go? Because I've worn the same uh, specs for years. When I went to go shop, you know, you look, you're looking at the eyeglasses and how men's eyeglasses, there's all these big, thick, black frame glasses that okay. have come in the style. Like black kind of holly. Yeah. Well, I, I think of um, this is an obscure reference, but uh, Eric Honecker, who was the uh, head of East Germany like when the oh, Berlin yeah. Wall went down. Great you ever see pi- wear. I remember one him. Of the best. Hey, why, did you he? ever see pictures of him? He's got this ridiculous khaki jacket and yeah. these giant black framed spectacles. Mm-hmm. And I always think mm-hmm. Eric Honecker when I see those glasses. Wow, I don't huh? think they look good on me, though. A little obscure, but that's okay, mm, you know? That was, I, mean, so, I would Rob, think Rick, of obscure. Have you found it easy now to get used to not having x-ray glasses? <laughs> um, x-ray glasses? I don't get oh, it. wait. What? Hold on. What do, I, I'm... I'm um, He's confused. That was you have not to it, uh, by Cobra on the rim shot. Right. Let's. Um, there's another thing that we saw in the paper today about Dallas. You know that oh, that yeah. Texas is just such a screwed up place. Did you hear this one? One you heard the story. I did. Right? This guy who's on trial for murder, murdering his sixth wife, and the guy he hired to murder her. Wait a minute. He murdered five wives no, before? No, no. He's, he's married six times. He married... <laughs> well, they don't know. Who knows? Hang on. You just said his sixth wife he murdered. Allegedly. Mac, Mac Rimshot. Um, yeah. Whatever. Yes, right. Yes. He, 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 we don't know the what one through five you know, went through, even if they're still breathing. Who knows? Right. Okay? But wife number six he murdered, and then murdered the guy he hired to murder her. Okay. <laughs> So this guy walks into court, and the first thing he requests of the judge is, is it okay if I wear my Tony Romo shirt during the trial? Okay, his Tony Romo game shirt. Right. Okay. And the judge says yes. So he is sitting in trial. Is this on the TV down there, Rob? It must be. I actually missed this story. Oh, no, you didn't. Come on. It must be headlines down there. And and this guy, so he's going through the whole trial with, and he got convicted. Now they're just waiting for his sentence. Okay. So. And on the way to the courtroom, was he saying, ever since I was 12 years old or something, I've been a fan of Tony Romo? Oh, yeah. That's what he said. I grew up watching Tony Romo. You know, he's the greatest. But obviously, it's a way to sway the jury, is how I took the the understory. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. I'm assuming this is an, this is a, this is in, this is in Dallas, yeah. Yeah, okay. um, maybe I've missed. Yes, I think it is in Dallas. Yes, or it okay. has to do with Dallas, that crummy team down there, Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, on the schedule. Well, okay, rag on rub about the Dallas Cowboys, and now what's next? Gotta we're get gonna mention it. All right, um, we're going to talk about submarines. I think. I know, but but can we talk about how I'm going to sue ISIS first for stealing the idea out of what? The, the, oh, this was your idea. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, okay. Let me just say. Let me. Okay, so you got to tell me about. How they stole it from you? Okay. I'll, I'll I'll start. I'll I'll explain what what they did. Talk about but, uh, a, a legal problem, okay? Or a so, legal opportunity? You never know. Okay. Well, they know. also stole a truck from Texas. I'll mention before this. They uh, or they they bought a truck. It was a I think it was an oil company near Galveston, <laughs> and it was this pickup truck, and it wound up in Iraq with a machine gun bolted in the bed. Oh, it's gotta like, be a Toyota. Uh, <laughs> it's a Toyota for sure, right? The branching. Was, out. I think it was a Toyota, but the company's. Uh, Logo, logo and was. phone number was on the side of it, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. You know, you never know. Good promotion. You tie it down. <laughs> yeah. Not to really tie down what good promotion is. In a way, I mean, it was like, I mean, I, I don't know if the owner was too happy about the phone calls he received. They, yeah. You know, they realize you sell, you sell it to a story. company, it gets shipped overseas, it winds up who knows where. But yep. anyhow, um, so the uh, the battle for Mosul, uh, Iraq, second largest yes. city, is um, you know, the, it's almost it's over. Pretty much Almost over. Yep. I mean, it's it's. You hear the Iraqi government say that we, you know, we've declared victory, but there's still holdouts. And, yes. Um, th- so these Iraqi forces, they came across. It was an interesting uh, battlefield contraption. Yes. Uh, these uh, two shipping containers. Yes. But when they opened the door inside, at the in at the uh, far end inside the container was a. They built a. They had taken a T. Looked like a T fifty five, which is a Soviet tank uh the turret from the tank and they built it into the rear of the shipping container with the barrel kind of you know uh stretched down Mm -hmm. the length of the container 
So when you'd pop open the uh, doors, they'd fire. Ah, boom. At, okay. Wow. Yeah, and it's a little camouflage tank gun, okay. which I thought was very interesting. I mean, it's not that unusual, but. What well, page uh, nine one nineteen Superhawks one, published in two thousand eight. Okay, you on the ship. They're they're uh, another undercover group on a container ship, mm -hmm. and all the containers have their weapons in them. Mm -hmm. And one of them you open is a tank there, and ba boom. Now is that just a coincidence? Yep. No, it's not. Thank you, it. Thank you Cobra. It. Thank you, your loyalty. I told you over and over again, you are creating the playbook for the world we live <laughs> oh, well. in when it comes to no, I mean, the combat. <laughs> We've talked about this before. I mean, well, there was on your latest book. There's yes. a. I should have mentioned it, but there's the uh, the aircraft carrier boarding. Yeah, and what book would that be, Rob? That you're referring uh, to? Battle for America. Yep. On sale book everywhere. Eighteen. Yep. On sale. Yeah, but that's not as actionable as this. You know, I mean, we're going to go to the Hague and fight ISIS and try to win in court what they can't do on the battlefield. One, one. That's the plan. So that Mac Maloney versus ISIS World Court. Be there or be square. Chapter one. So is that idea a, a copyrightable thing or what? It was in 2008. Yeah. Are you saying that the Library of Congress number in his book it, it's is mine. not uh, binding? Yeah, it's my yeah, intellectual property, saying? and these <laughs> are stealing it. And, you know, something has to be done, right? Oh, I'm gonna have to cut he, that he threw out. the flag on <laughs> wow. wow. Jack Nicholson, what do you think about this? Should I sue them or what? <laughs> Take them down, <laughs> down, 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 <laughs> downtown. <laughs> To Chinatown. What we have to like cut a that Scud's out. missile. Downtown to Chinatown. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice reference. Right? Okay. <laughs> so, Rob. Well, what I was going to say, movies? by the way, yes. military, we're talking about military thrill novels. And there was, uh, well, I remember when 9 when 11 happened, I, I was thinking, because I'd read a bunch of Tom Clancy books. Yes. And I thought, this sounds, you know, My before God. people really knew it was a terrorist attack, I was thinking <laughs> of, uh, what was that book? It was yeah, it was a Tom Clancy one where they flew it into the Capitol. And they yeah, 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 the, yeah. Some of all our fears. Yeah. The sum of all yeah, fears. Like right. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, there was two of these. I mean, they weren't, I mean, uh, clearly the idea behind these uh, tank, you know, c container tank cannons was to mm -hmm. uh, hide them from airstrikes. Right. Hide them from aerial reconnaissance. Yes. Uh, and I, it apparently worked. I mean, judging from the fact that they were captured intact and not destroyed from the air. Yes. Which uh, would have likely been the fate of any you know exposed t-55 which the uh, isis had captured like two dozen of them right um and um so it was interesting it was another little um kind of mad max-esque i think you know, uh i think device. Uh, he sounds like he's going to be testifying for the defense here doesn't he he mm, <laughs> doesn't yes. exactly seem to me on my side oh <laughs> mac, <laughs> mac if i could just uh, it me? interject because we were on a very tight legal stance here okay uh we were meant to say debt of honor not some of all fears oh, okay. uh, yeah, debt okay. of honor was the one where the japanese pilot uh, takes the jl airplane on a maintenance run and crashes it into the some of all fears was the red one where they oh, take the israeli bomb bring it into the united states and blow it up in denver oh okay all right Correct. why denver because they weren't denver bronco fans <laughs> they eat a lot of bacon there and that was got oh, them see up, now there's there. three well Get ready, Jeff. Get some Red Bull. Once again, <laughs> uh, I'd like the audience to know that I have not uh, used any of my rim shots tonight. Okay. That's right. You know, if, you, if you're tuning in late, you have no idea what he's talking about. Sounds filthy, his, but it really his is. His quota is two, and he hasn't used any. Anyway. So, um, yeah, Rob, so we'll probably get into this later, but what, basically what we're saying is that, you know, ISIS, those wily fellows, have been putting weaponizing containers, and, and containers go on container ships. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea behind Superhawks number one, published in 2008, is that an undercover special ops group is on a container ship, and every container has a different kind of weapon. So that's interesting. Okay, actionable. Um, yes, there was a, also, I should note that, again, the, the idea isn't entirely new. There was a Russian company which makes a uh, the club, it's called a K with a club with a K, mm -hmm. uh, anti ship missile. Nice. Which uh, they, a couple years ago, put out a video, a little marketing video. Um, you know, uh, suggesting it could be installed inside a container, mm. uh, you know, like on a container ship. So you could almost like the top of the container pops open and the missile yeah. launches out of the top. I'm and, telling you, uh, this is yeah, the Russians are reading very, my books still. Not paying for it's them. A, reading. It's very G.I. Joe, you know, kind of Thank play you. set, you know, pop up missile. And, yeah. But the idea is you could sell it to, you know, a third world country, <laughs> you know, military that wants a, uh, you know, hidden concealable uh uh, anti-ship capability mm -hmm. yeah and um and you know it's actually very realistic i mean and you know that those types of weapons are proliferating globally mm -hmm. uh and you know the u.s navy has also been 
thinking about ways to use these. Uh, the there was a uh, retired admiral who, in proceedings, which is a really influential uh, uh, naval journal. Right. Uh, if you've seen uh, the Hunt for Red October movie. Um, you'll see these for people who don't know proceedings, Jack Ryan in his studies got these, you know, stacks of these magazines right. yeah. sitting around and it's read by, you know, people in the Navy yeah. and they talk about how they have a, the Navy has a big problem because, um, our anti-ship missiles can't be reloaded at sea. Wow. You know, once you fire off all the, you know, harpoon missiles right. on these, what, what are called VLS, uh, vertical launch systems, mm -hmm. um, they have to go back to port, Ooh. which is well, that's going to take it. That's going to take time. Yeah. And if you're going to be, there's a big problem. The Navy's outgunned essentially by, you know, uh, rising powers like China. What? So if you can, um, you know, not only at, not only are our missiles not long range enough, but we can't reload them. Hmm. And so they're talking about how, well, what if we take a older ship, a container ship mm -hmm. or, you know, the U.S., the Navy has them, the, um, or even an amphibious assault ship, you know, these light carriers, these flat tops. Right. And you could fly a container loaded with missiles on a heavy lift helicopter, drop it on the deck, fire it, Bada pick bang. it back up, you know, replace it and keep it and stay in the fight. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> the future of the, the future of naval warfare might not be like how we see it today. It can be, um, how do, how do I... Yeah, you a little, little more uh, down on the uh, gutter a little bit. A little more, che not cheaping, but I mean, really, couldn't you really, when you think about it, just get a container ship, put a bunch of weapons on it, like you say, and the roofs of the weapons open up or whatever, or the fronts open up, and that's your, that's the defense of the ship, and the roofs open up, and that's your anti-ship missiles or whatever, and just, you know, put it out there and probably do it for one hundredth what they well, pay for That Washington. sounds a lot like the Arsenal ship that they talked about right. and then went away from a number of times where the ship was just going to be a giant gunboat. Mm -hmm. uh, it was going to be a huge gunboat. And your container ship analogy uh, and metaphor has been used. The Brits actually, because they didn't have aircraft carriers, took cargo ships, put Harriers on cargo ships mm -hmm. and used the physical containers to make hangars at sea. And they were launching vertically and recovering them vertically to do the strikes when they went to the Falklands right, yeah. until they had enough ships in the air and they actually had Stanley, uh, Port Stanley able to, to, to take the, right. the aircraft. Well, oh, okay. One of those... Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, d the idea is you don't want to focus, you, you, you don't want to put too much priority on the hull. You mm -hmm. know, you could have a pretty simple, you know, just platform for firing lots of missiles. And in mm -hmm. a way it's kind of almost like a battleship. Right. Sure. Without the armor. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, with a lot of guns or missiles. Well, why case. don't they do that? Why don't they just make? I mean, I know the arsenal ship's a different thing. This, with this, I'm talking about like something that's really kind of down and dirty, but you know, you know, it's still kind of, um, you know, viable and could be used. Just it doesn't look pretty, you know. It doesn't look pretty. Well, imagine what that means, Mac. When we talked, what was it a year ago when the uh, the Brits got caught and they were wearing. Uh, or they, they disclosed that they were wearing uh, the, the female garb so that the guys could move around dressed as women uh, behind the lines. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking no, about. Don't play that, that no, game with me. I'll, I'll come out behind the bulletproof, and we're, we'll get down and yeah. dirty on this. Okay. Now, knock it off. You know that I'm talking. The SAS, there was a disclosure that they would wear the hajib, and they were moving around freely because of the—, the Islamic code of not to interfere with women. Yes. And they were able to do that. Yes. If you do this with container ships and move it around, that yes. now potentially means every ship that's afloat that's got containers has to be, could yeah. be a shooter. Right. And has to be, what, boarded you, and x-rayed yeah. and all that stuff? Board you know? or you now have to plan for many more enemies. Yes. Right. So what are yeah. you saying, that the world is too civilized to go down that road? No, I think it's a great idea, and I, I hopefully somebody's Just doing it on our side. Is what I'm saying. There's people thinking about it. I mean, there's you know, uh, th there's that conceptual work being done, but I think a big problem is, you know, shipbuilding takes is planned years, decades in advance, and uh, Congress also. Yes. Um, well, you know, there's they, my favorite people bastards. on the planet. Thanks yeah. for bringing them up, Rob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's some great thinkers. Yeah, a, there we go. Politically you know, like a, a booing sound effect that, to yes. play when, when, when I'm I I'm not it. using my sound effects. No. I'm only allowed to. Me neither. Come so on, please, Tell me what sound effects to use, Rob, or we're going to end up in an unhappy place. Wow. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. <laughs> Loud and clear. Um, but, you know, the idea is that Congress, you know, they mandate number of ships, types of ships, and, um, you know, they, they give the Navy options. You know, it's like, okay, we do plan A, plan B, plan C, but all each, right. all three are Air fairly are constrained. 
try this on. How about Congress, you know, in between vacations, days off, uh, weekends, and voting their own pay raises? How about this? They put out a couple of letters of mark to these merchant ships, put these weapon systems on board with a small squad of sailors and or Marines. And now with that letter of mark, they don't have to worry about all that. And they go forward with it. It's time for Optimum's Red Hot Sale. Get 200 meg internet, TV with over 260 channels, and unlimited home phone, all for $69.99 a month for one year guaranteed. And for a limited time, HBO and Showtime are included for one year. Switch today. Click for details and special web-only offers. And what what's, what's a letter of mark? I think it sounds, I think it sounds A letter of mark is a legal part. We used to use it until we had a, a large standing Navy that said to a privateer, which is a privately owned vessel, you will now go out under commission of the United States government yes. and engage the enemy. Yes. Okay. So are you saying that this is a good idea for the present time? Is that what yes, you're absolutely. If we, if we have all these legal, all of a sudden we have all these legal constraints that we can't build ships and all the stuff and Congress has to weigh in on it. We want a 350 ship Navy. I got an easy way to do that by next week. Well, see, yeah, I agree. You're like, like, but like, like you idea. said, though, you're going to have but to. But you're then, uncomfortable because you and I agree. Is that it? Mac? No, no, you're no. But it, then you would have to search every container ship that comes into every port. That's er, true. You know, you, you, it would take you years. To, you'd be backlogged for years in ports. Now, every time I see a container going down the highway, I'm going to be think, what's in that? Yeah. It's like a jacket in the box, but exactly. what? it doesn't end well. No. What happened? Like mm-hmm. You open that container. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's a jack-in-the-box, right. And I should remind you that on that the mystery at Mystery Airport, when I saw them flying that drone there, right. they were shipping it the in one the that's container. Not connected, yeah. The yeah. one that's not connected to the government? Yeah, the one that's not connected to um, that lab out there, Lincoln Labs. Mm. Yeah, we don't do any work for the government. Anyway, yes, so that was in a container. So maybe this is the wave of the future, you know? Well, I'll say if we don't, then, you know, the Russians are already thinking about ta- how to do it themselves. We don't and, talk about them on the show. Know, and the chi- China, you know, they, the Chinese military, I mean, mm-hmm. they have a private, I mean, essentially, uh, or it's a quasi-military, mm-hmm. paramilitary naval militia. What the uh, hell is quasi about That's it? out on fisher- fishing boats. Well, oh, yeah, you know, right. With, sure. with weapons hidden yeah. inside, you know, that are going out and harassing U.S. ships. That's, and that's going on. So there's all kinds of, a, you know, this world of well, skullduggery and cloak and dagger. Rob sounds a little commie tonight. He Doesn't does. he sound a little commie tonight? I like the use of the about... word skullduggery. Jack Still Nicholson. It's a word you don't hear very often no. in Jack, this century. You're right. Jack Nicholson, we got a commie on the line. What are you going to do? Well, we're going to take him out back. Right. Have a convo. <laughs> okay. That's why we want you on that wall, Mr. Nicholson. We need him on that we, wall. We live in a world that has walls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rob, uh, moving on. Um, another interesting story in War is Boring. Rob works for War is Boring. War is Boring.com. Best military writing on the internet they're going to do a story about us someday one won't you know that a story, about story about us about, yeah about how we've Why? had him on for three years oh, free yeah. of charge yes <laughs> uh the u.s navy it's, it's I love good that story. you don't sound bitter because that, that's not good. rob is a good get you know right. not every, yes. every right. channel or not every but you know what jesus said that. one hand washes the other that's right, right. That was Pontius Pilate, but oh, don't worry right. about it's it. Okay. He's connected to Jesus. You're <laughs> doing well. All right. You can draw a dotted line. Six so. degrees of separation. <laughs> can you do one? Uh, what did Jesus sound like? I always wonder, what, you know, what would he have sounded like? Do you know? Do you want to I, he probably didn't Go ahead. Speak damn your English. soul. No, damn I'm your just, soul. I'm, we'll I'm curious. Go ahead. Damn like a Mel Gibb. Like don't Mel step Gibson on Jesus. Video. He's speaking. Go ahead, please, Jesus. Do it in Aramaic, too. If you're going to be genuine, I want an Aramaic. He's thinking, baby. Abba. Abba. No. That's a Swedish rock group. Oh, good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, Rob, I, uh, this uh, story that was in the on where I was born the other day about how the U.S. Navy, this is a cool story, used to drop little tiny magnets on top of Russian submarines to help track them, right? Uh, yeah. Well, for a little while. Um, it didn't work all that well, hmm. but it was interesting uh, technologically. Um, so the uh, we have to go back to the 1960s where um, at the time the uh, – Soviet Union had the largest uh, submarine force in the world. It was uh, around 300, 300 uh, diesel electric boats. Okay. And there are also some nuclear uh, uh, propelled models. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of interesting ideas of how to deal with that. I mean, because, you know, a submarine's greatest asset is its, uh, is its uh, how quiet it is. And, you know, it, stealth. And especially at the time when sub, you know you, the US was worried about Soviet submarines creeping up onto uh, uh, American coastlines yes. uh, finding ways to make them noisier 
nice. uh, became a priority. So the idea was you, uh, this Canadian scientist uh, developed a, I guess you'd call it a sticky undersea yes. uh, noisemaker magnet. That's that a magic drew. phrase of the night. Mm. Sticky undersea noisy magnet. Yeah, a little redundant, sticky magnet, you know. But yeah, um, that name, was the idea. Good would, name for a band, one could, one. Good name for a band, the sticky the name magnet of a movie. Yeah. Go ahead, boys. Okay, who was that? Who just jumped in there? Was that Jack Nicholson? No, just me. Okay, just Phil. All right. Okay. <laughs> undersea magnet. That sounds like kind of like, a, like an album name for. Yeah, so, undersea so magnet. What, what yeah. did the magnets do? They created a, a rougher edge for the water to flow over the submarine, so that it makes more ripples in the water or something. They would um, drop. For, well, first of all, they would. You know, if you would detect the submarine, uh, you would fly. O- you could fly over the area in a um, patrol plane, drop mm-hmm. the magnets into the water, and yeah. they would uh, attach themselves to the hull of the submarine, and yes. then also, but also bang up and down against the hull. Uh, okay. Okay. Be partially one, attached. Make noise. one one is an expert in, in ASW, right? That's right, anti-submarine warfare. All right, so does so that make sense to like you? It's like a loose screen door, yeah, right, mm-hmm. that's banging in the wind. Yeah. Right. And uh, the idea was is that you could just, yeah, impair their undersea activities. Um, right. There's an interesting story, actually, about why they weren't used very long. Okay. And so in 1962, uh, the... Uh, I should note this is a not an American uh, idea, though the U.S. Navy worked with them. Okay. The uh, the British Navy sent a submarine called the HMS Auriga mm. to Nova Scotia, and they were going to train with this thing. Mm-hmm. They dropped the magnets, and uh, it worked. They you know clang you know attached themselves to the hull, clang made a lot of noise. Sonar operators you know, they could hear it loud and clear. But toward the end of the exercise, the magnets kind of made their they made their way into uh, these holes and slots that are on the sub's um, outer hull. Yes. That are designed to let water flow. Okay. So like the top of the ballast tanks, it's um, and you just nooks and crannies. Yes. That uh, are very hard to rem- it was very hard to remove them, mm-hmm. and so um, not and they can't be removed at sea. Okay. So. Uh, this submarine was now completely useless <laughs> for anything. Who knew? You know. Noise. And <laughs> you so it chances. makes them impossible to train with, um, and really expensive to remove and time-consuming. Mm-hmm. Then well, why you know, didn't the, they just uh, blank a Russian submarine with them? They did for they did uh, on a um, a few times, but but um, they were never. Um, never considered to be practical on a large scale. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, as far as we know. Cope, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the reason they didn't do it is there's some kind of a gentleman's agreement at sea, some things you don't do, that might be one of them, ruin our subs with little magnets? No. Okay. Like, right, go on, Rob, like then. Rules, <laughs> violate the rules of war. For, <laughs> I was waiting for 10 minutes on that, and he mm-hmm. was very succinct. Um, so, well, I don't know. It sounds like a cool idea. I know that the way that uh, nuclear subs are, like the way that U.S. nuclear subs are built, <clears throat> every washer has like a little puffy thing in it. You know, every washer, yeah. every screw has like a grommet. rubber washer. Yeah, every, yeah, everyone has to wear sneakers, you know. Every, everything, every little minute right. noise that is made it's is everybody, every, everything It's everything about the sound signature that's produced yeah. from the submarine. So if yeah. you could somehow have like a little screen door rattling on a submarine, I could see how it would help you. But screen so doors into the bathroom, wonder, though, I could flag you. Yeah. Okay. I would note that as we write, we write and report on military issues that submarines are one of the hardest things to write about mm-hmm. because it's so secretive. Yes. And you know, there's very you know that's si- the silent service, mm-hmm. right? And so you know, you get glimpses here and there, but there's no telling, you know, like what's out there. Right. You know, and the different kinds of technologies that are being, um, you know, employed today. Right. But, we have no idea. But you said like the, the Russians had the uh, most subs, right? But I mean, it's seriously, a lot 60s. of them were in yeah. the 60s, right? And yeah, a lot of them were just crap. crap, right, exactly. I mean, now, the, could I bring up very quickly a movie plug that is well worth anybody interested in a... Okay. It's actually at a, almost a conspiratorial level. Yes. It's called the movie's called The Phantom. The Phantom. It's got uh, Ed Harris, David Duchovny, a few others. There's a there's Ed a Harris? secret uh, drive. 
that they're working in there. Yes. Is Mr. Duchovny in the room? Is Ed Harris no. in the room? Is, no. Did we able to bring them no. in tonight? No. no. Okay. okay. They were busy. Just checking the book. Yeah. Okay. They were doing other things. It's an excellent movie because it's 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 fictionalized, but it's based on what they believe are some actual events, mm -hmm. and it appears that the Russians were very close in the mid '60s, or then Soviets, fielding a drive system that mimicked. Right. the sounds of other ships that it heard so that when the American fleet would approach it sub or surface ship, mm -hmm. it would emanate a sound Ooh. that matched and you would go past it and say, okay, that's one of ours. Like a mockingbird. A, a, a mockingbird, mock right? A submarine impersonator. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Is, that's interesting. Is that some kind of a, so they, it, they seem, it could mimic the signature of an American right. sub or a NATO sub right. and then boom. Off go. It's a really interesting movie really to smart. watch. Yeah, really. Smart. Is that based on fact that the Russians actually try to do it, this? It is based on fact, and this I don't know how far the movie varies from what fact part of it is, but mm -hmm. it's called The Phantom, and it's excellent. I believe uh, Sean Connery liked that movie. Yeah, yeah Sean, I actually, I thought it was a little better than uh, my movie, The Hunt for Red October. Ooh, no, way yeah. no way. No way, Sean. No, no. Hey, you know, I'm trying Sean, to be humble. I'm trying to drink. <laughs> anyway, have a moxie. Gentlemen. Yeah, have a moxie. So proud. No, no. I mean, so uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, what's the state of the? No, I'm not even going to get into that. But obviously, the Russia, the uh, U.S. Navy is the strongest navy in the world right now. There, Rob. Yes, no. Yes. Okay. And that the next eleven navies stronger going down the list are our allies. Yes. Uh, that's a good question. You're going to put me on the spot. Okay. Um, China's catching up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Russia's still. You know, they've still got, you know, a fairly sizable, threatening submarine navy. I mean, of course, much reduced from, yeah, from but its heyday. The, the, they're, they're still building new subs that are Okay, but, but but how about, I mean, just the state of their navy, yeah, it took them like six months to tow their aircraft carrier down to the Mediterranean off of Syria, correct? Where it lost two yeah, planes, caught on fire. Yeah, but that's also fire. the Admiral Kuznetsov, which is a okay. very special ship. That's this, way. yeah, it's a so special. It's followed by two tugs everywhere it goes, correct, in case it breaks down? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that right? Uh, yes, but or at least one. But I know Cobra's also has informed has informed us and me because I've made light of this on War is yes. Boring that that's not that unusual that the U.S. Navy also has you know ships that can do that kind of work that kind but of. Tuck, but do they you know, follow our up. aircraft carriers around twenty four seven? Cobra? No, they do not. And, not and, on, and, and US don't side. our U.S. But aircraft... I would like to say that your next legal case yes. would be from the Wingman series when you had the tugboats that yes. had the. Absolutely. shamrocks on the top of them right and it was part of that visionary dream that uh, the wingman went through pulling the aircraft carrier across the atlantic for the right. big battle the loose uh, i saying. think the russians had that on the translation and oh. i think that they thought this was a great way to move around also on sale everywhere lucifer crusade wingman three i believe um maybe two i'm not sure but anyway it's would you like there. me to look it up in the file sir i think it was number three thank you so um well anyway the french, the french and british navies as well i should get a mention in there in terms of submarines so. mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was on a Russian submarine once. It was the uh, submarine that was used in um, K-1, the Destroyer. Was that the name of the movie? K-1 or something? It wasn't Hunt for Red October. It was a movie. Ha Harrison Ford was in it. He played basically Sean Connery. K-19. K-19. It's in, it's yeah. on, it's, it was docked down in uh, Providence, Rhode Island for hmm. a long time as a museum. Hmm. I went down there, and uh, they gave us a tour of... The sub, Lois Lane and I, and um, it was like being in a um, uh, at a carnival, uh, being in like the the you know what do you call it? You know the, the, the madhouse, arcade, the, the arcade. No, no the one, going yeah. to the, the um, fun house, the, the fun, fun house. house. You got it, baby. And yeah. it was really fun. And the deeper you walked into this thing, the scarier it became. Right. It was just like a bad dream or something that that you would actually. I was afraid being in it. Tied up to the dock. I can't imagine anyone going on. And I'm not kidding you. Stuff was like nothing was perfected. Nothing was finished. Everything was just, you know, paint was just brushes, you know, brush strokes still there. The guy stared it by sitting on a little bench with a, with a something that looked like the emergency brake on a Volkswagen. You know what I mean? Just a little bit of a, you know. <laughs> yeah. That That's how they stared it. You know, the officer's room was made of not just wood but like plywood fake plywood on these fake Beautiful. wooden panels and stuff yeah. and, the, and the guy the tour guy said you know how it would take us about 30 seconds for this whole place to go up with one spark because they're all smoking cigars all smoking cigars and it's there's oxygen in there Jeez. you know crazy 
I wouldn't go. It was just, it was horrible. It really was. We thought we were going to have a fun time. We just Mr. Brownlee, let's get out of here. Um, yes. which wingman did you think that that was? Number wingman, three, the loose of a crusade. Loose, yes. Would you think the number was? Number three. Excellent. All right. It was? Yes. Holy smoke. That's where they tow the, air, the broken down aircraft carrier, the USS Saratoga, across the Mediterranean because they need an air base, floating air base, over in the Middle East. So they tow it. Why it's, not? And they push. That'll be your second legal case to take up. Yep. All right, boy. I'm going to be busy. Right behind the ISIS. Anyway. Mac versus the world. There you go. <laughs> oh. Number 12. 22. Rob, so what else is going on? Anything that you can tell us? Uh, uh drawing a blank. I mean, you mentioned submarines that are submarine parks. I mean, there we have um, here in Texas, we have the USS Seawolf, which is an old World War II submarine. Mm-hmm. In Galveston, next to the USS Texas, which is okay, battleship, amazing. right? Well, dreadnought, yeah, battleship from World War One, right? And um, that's fun. So if you ever in Galveston, mm-hmm. it's not a lot to do in Galveston, but right, yeah, yeah, Galveston. That's should right I, on the ocean. Should right? I break out in song? Yeah. Galveston, no oh Galveston. Who wrote it? Um, who wrote it? Jimmy Webb. Oh, same great. guy wrote my guy at the park. Come on, you should want one, please. My my I dad's from there, and he grew up there. And they always say that there's no, you know, there's no waves, really at all to speak of. So whenever there's a hurricane, you'll see surfers go out right before you know, right oh, when the waves. No, that's up. sad. You know, almost as sad as seeing people kind of surfing true, in New Hampshire. Have you seen those guys out there? They're on the water. All they're doing is riding the board, you know, because there's not enough waves. To... My daughter surfed Santa Cruz, and they were going to experience a typhoon. Mm. And all the kids from University of California, Santa Cruz, wanted to run out there and watch the typhoon from the shoreline. And people are surfing in it? Yes. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> I have nightmares about something like that. She texts me and says, this is the state of the educational system. There you go. At least in California, anyway. <laughs> Christopher Walken, does, have you ever done surfing? Yeah, you know... <laughs> Once in a while, I like to get on the boogie board. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you drive a Woody? <laughs> That's private. <laughs> <laughs> He's drive, a laugh around. Drive it to what? <laughs> laugh a minute. Says the self rim <laughs> shot, man. <laughs> so, Rob, anything going on in the kitchen, if you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, no. No? No. Wow, no. man. It's a long, long time we yeah. talked to him. He was watching Love Line at 2 in the morning, 1 1. That is no. sad. <laughs> than, right? You find them. Uh, yeah, I really stepped in at mentioning that. <laughs> he I? sure did. We, we saw his profile online. Yeah. All right, we're here to help. Like, That's are all they we okay, okay, Cupid? Or, yeah. yep. <laughs> oh, wow. We're here to help, okay? Did it say he likes pina coladas? And walks on the beach? <laughs> 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 anyway, thank you, Rob, for joining us. Yep. We can't yep. because we like you. That's right. I know. Okay. I know. All right. But it would be a more interesting <laughs> bit if you found someone else to come in and wash your dishes. You know, I'm going to be frank with you. So why don't you let you us? Do, you want me to? You want me to find somebody so you can you can um, uh, press me to bring them on the press. radio? Yes. <laughs> That's I know. I know. Wow, he's a short read. Wow, you Captain understood that, right? Jumped on to the we, show. We tonight. want to make sports so situation. Rob. Yes, right, exactly. <laughs> Undercover reporting, right there. <laughs> so now you got it. So yeah, right. you know, time to put yep. it into fourth gear. Okay. Right, and we will get, help. It's we're, only going to get worse. We're <laughs> offering a help. They have Craigslist down in Dallas, right? There'll be some extra no freaks, dough in your No freaks on the there, right? Crystal Walker, no freaks on <laughs> yeah, sure, No, yeah. turn over if you want to finish your massage. There you go. All right. <laughs> Maybe a little too deep. Who knows? Oh, Thank you, Rob. massage. Nice pun. That was well done. Well that was played. beautiful. Uh, accidental. 37 minutes. Uh, thank you, Rob, for joining us. And, Your next uh, show, gentlemen. We're, we're actually we're off next week. We're taking a what's the word? One Hi- one hiatus. Hiatus next week. Okay. Hiatus. There you go. Sounds dirty, but it's not. <laughs> and uh, we'll probably run uh, you know some kind of a bust off, but we'll talk to you in two let's, weeks. Let's okay? run a let's run a two hour yep. blooper reel. Two hour. I don't think we have two hours worth. Of blooper. Sure, we do. I'm saving that for Mac Mac after dark. You should know that. Okay. Mad, right. mad at Mac after. Dark. Obviously, oh, somebody didn't get the memo, or no. if they did, they're yeah, not paying no. attention. No. Wonder who that oh, is. You could be hearing from Alfred E. Newman now. There you go, my hero. <laughs> when I was after college, I used to walk around with a keychain with Alfred E. Newman on. <laughs> so much for a fan I was. Is that when you were going to film school? That's when I was going to film school. Thank mm-hmm. you. And beyond, actually. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Rob, thank I you. That was really, I thought that was really popular at GE. We'll talk to, to you have in two that, weeks. that keychain. We're ignoring it. Thank you, uh, Rob. And uh, I'll tell you, we are uh, going to take a commercial break now, if that's okay with you, Commander. Am I stepping on your line there? 
Oh, not at all. Okay, good. All yep. right. I will talk to you all uh, Thank you, in Rob. two weeks. We appreciate it. Thanks, Take Rob. Care, Be Rob. safe. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Rob Beckhausen of War is Boring. War is Boring dot com, the best military writing on the net. It is. Someday they're going to do a major story it's on It's better this. than the, that Jane's book. Of, oh, Jane's. Come on. That's what Pansy's. It is. War is dot com. Really, some it's of the funniest stuff. graders. This is good. Some of the stuff that I read on there, I'm like, re, I'm, I'm just reading, I'm saying this can't possibly be true. You know, just like stupid things the military does. Not just our military either, but it is true. It's hard to believe, it, too. Because, it's hard to believe, right. Yeah. But There's it really, a bit of sense of humor. Their, their yes, humor is, for is sure. well written, underwritten well. War is boring. Dot com. Uh, so anyway, why don't we take a commercial break now, and when we come back, we'll be uh, we'll uh, be present another fascinating segment. So stay tuned. You'll see Mac Miller's Military Excel Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call GEICO, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. <laughs> GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. For this, UFOs are found in Renaissance art, on ancient coins, and etched on cave walls. They're even reported in the Bible. But more surprising is when UFOs are seen the most in times of war. Through centuries, thousands of UFO sightings have been made by high-ranking officials, military pilots, and ordinary soldiers. Often, these fantastic appearances occur at the height of great battles. From World War I to D-Day to Korea, Vietnam, and beyond, military investigators are baffled. Why do UFO sightings spike so drastically during wartime? Could it be mistaken aircraft, or is someone, or something, looking in on us? In UFOs in wartime, what they didn't want you to know, Mac Maloney chronicles centuries of these incredible sightings and tries to solve the puzzle of why so many UFOs are seen while humanity is at war. Read about the scare ships, the ghost planes, and the ghost rockets, alien giants in the jungles of Vietnam, UFOs controlling our ICBM bases, dogfights with flying saucers during the Gulf War, and more. 300 pages of unbelievable stories, along with many startling photographs. That's UFOs in Wartime, What They Didn't Want You to Know, by Mac Maloney. On sale at your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. can't handle the truth. Only Commander Cobra can handle the truth. Welcome back, everyone. It's Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show. You're on the Distant Thunder Radio Network, Ms. Mac Maloney. Uh, let me introduce the crew in the studio with us tonight on this timeless segment. One one is here. Yes, sir, Mark. How's it going? Mark. Going, Mark. Mac. M- Mark? Did you call me Mark? I said. Thanks a lot. Okay, the, the true feelings come through there, one one, you know. It's a Freudian when people, slip. Yeah, <laughs> when people mistake, they really mean it. Anyway, Whatever. thanks for being here, one one. You got Whatever, it, that's a nice you retort. Got it, Cobra, as always, jumping on his own intro. So, Amanda Cobra is here, disposed location nearby, you know. Oh, well, such enthusiasm. Within, thanks, Mac. It's within great range. It's great to be here with Elliot tonight. <laughs> Having a hard time yeah, seeing the signals okay. from the lead of the formation. Sorry about that. I'll go oh, back yeah. to my silent position on the wing. Okay. All right. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> anyway, he's here. Also, a uh, very famous uh, author, Mark Zapula. Mark. Here. Yes, That's jumped right, in on us. It's good to be here, guys. I kind of, I just, you know, I stopped by. I heard you guys were giving away some scotch and cigars, but uh, Ooh, I oh didn't boy. see any. I decided. Are <laughs> yeah, you at the wrong party? <laughs> I decided let's to go. stay anyway. Let's find out where the real party is, and we'll. Scotch and cigars. Scotch good, and cigars. Good name for a song by the like Jackie, peanut butter or jelly. Jackie Gleason and his orchestra. That's yeah, right, exactly. And Cobra, of course, is a big scotch and cigar guy, right? Yeah. There you go. That's what I'm saying. No cigars, just a scotch. Okay, there you go. All right, what's the best scotch in the world right now? Quick. Uh, I would say Irishman, a uh, single malt that coming out of uh, out of Ireland. Yes, it's a whiskey, obviously um, phenomenal for the price. It is unbelievable. What's it called? Paddy's? No, the Irishman. <laughs> oh, the Irishman. That's the little name of this scotch. Yeah, okay. It is 
unbelievable for the price. Average is like thirty, thirty two dollars. Unbelievable. A bottle, yeah, okay. And what's it smooth? Is that what you go it for? It is smooth? smooth. I don't know what kind of cask arrangement they're using to do the aging in it, but yes. it's like mother's milk. I right. mean, it's Ooh. just it's killing it. Holy cow! I'm all over it. I saw that video yesterday. <laughs> Not, not the dispenser one, one. The actual drink is what oh, I'm talking about. Oh, see, okay. You know, he had a dragon. So now, you're bu- now you're bumming me out. Right. So Coming it's better out. than the, the the stuff I'm drinking, which is called Leprechaun. There which you is, go. <laughs> That's comes, a little racist. Comes there. In, comes in the short bottle. Half Filipino, half Italian. <laughs> Box of pools. So what's going on with you? Uh, not much. You know, same old, same old. Okay. Same old. It's good to know the exciting yeah. light of a writer. <laughs> I know it well. Yeah. Yeah. Watch TV, a lot of daytime TV, man. You know, I watch a lot of celebrity um, family feud and stuff like that. I don't know how you write and watch TV, watch all the sports stuff. I'm multi, uh, you know. Unbelievable. I'm always... uh, You gotta wear two hats. I send you an email and he replies back in two seconds. You bet, baby. Boom. (laughs) I'm right on it. He's on it. Right. Anyway, uh, we have a special guest with us tonight. You know what's funny is that we talked a few weeks ago about this really weird thing called black-eyed children. It's one of the things that like really kind of freaks me out in the paranormal genre. Okay, UFOs, not really scary. You know, Bigfoot, and you know, who cares, really? You've seen one Bigfoot, you've seen yeah, them all. Yeah, Loch Ness Monster, interesting, but, you know, he's not going to eat you up or anything. Right. But these things called black-eyed children started in Europe and and. You, know, you hear reports of them now over in the U.S., over here in the U.S., and, and they, uh, for some reason, they tend to go to uh, military bases. Yeah. And basically what it is is that you'll be home at night. It'll be always, like, past 9 o'clock. It's dark, and you'll hear someone at the door, and you open up, and there'll be these two kids um, offering to come, you know, asking you, can you help us? We're in, you know, we have a problem. Um, you know, we're lost or something like that. And But they have black eyes. And mm. if you bring them into your house, even for, like, a second you're doomed, you know what I mean? People yeah. are going to die. There's going to be an earthquake. Who knows? Uh, there's been reports of them down Fort Benning, Georgia, of all places, went through a, a bunch of them like about a year ago. People reporting, you know, so who, who would make that up? You know what I mean? You're on a military base, high alert, I'm sure. And it wasn't Halloween or anything? No, just, no, it was like in springtime okay. or whatever. Wow. Yeah. So it just seems a strange place for them to show up and to, I can't believe it's a hoax yeah. these days. Anyway, we're honored to have one were of the Were there black children that maybe came back from the dead that they died from some know. strange... Uh, it's one don't. of the theories. Yeah. We uh, sometimes they're, they're been legendarily connect to vampires, demon yeah. possession, mm-hmm. well, uh, aliens. Uh, there's been it, The whole catalog has been covered by what their source is. Yeah. What's great about that is that we're honored tonight to have a black-eyed child in the studio with us, wandering off the street. Hi, and we didn't have to di- we didn't have to dim the lights. Nope. That was very nice. Wow. Thanks for having me. See? You know, a uh, cute little kid looks a little ragged around the edges. As, uh, pale, very pale. <laughs> looks like he hasn't yeah. had a meal in quite a while. Well, I think it's a girl, isn't it? I don't know. Is she, no, no, it's no? kind of like androgynous. Yeah, androgynous. Yes, that's what's weird about it. Yeah, kind of yeah, androgynous. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So uh, what are you doing out in the street at night there, kid? Um, looking in your window. <laughs> well, <laughs> Super how dope. can you look in your window if you got black eyes? Hmm. Dark they're, shades. They're not blind. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Why do you give them a little kid trouble already? They because want I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Didn't somebody I'm, on the flint have black eyes? The black way that eyes? they look at each other, yeah. I think they're going to start taking I a think swing. Kill me. Oh, wow. I said the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, but it's me. It's it's me that causes the problem. I'm and not saying Juan that. Well, not at this Juan moment. Juan, yeah, but yeah. Now we have a black eyed child guest, Great. and Juan Juan's yeah. picking a fight. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. nice. Did you frisk it for weapons or what? Oh my God. Frisk it. He said it was a secret. He said it was a secret. Right. Now listen. Whatever. Inappropriate. <laughs> what are you doing out there at night, kid? You walking around? Are you lost? What's going on? Um, I'm selling Avon. <laughs> you what? What was that? I selling think. Avon. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. What do you got? Eyeshadow? No. Wait. Hold it. So the black eyed kids. Yeah. One one. They come out at night, so he's not selling sunblock. Huh. No. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know. Sorry. You hear those at night every once in a while. Yeah. Like, oh, crickets. I eat them. You eat them? Do you? Yeah. No, oh, eating crickets. There's, there's a lot of protein in them. So why do you have black eyes? Or should we ask you? Have you been in a fight lately? Or why do you, you know, your friends yeah. have black eyes, you know? Because I always talk yeah. Oh. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> nice folks. Like you said, kiss your kid. mother with that mouth, black You invited guy? him in. No, no, I eat her. Oh, come on. That's not nice. Oh. Wait, for food. Oh. 
this is going in a dark place. I, I'm not yes, dark, dark, is dark places. <laughs> So why why what what why, why you want uh, it you, you, you why easy you, for you to say back I'm, excellent I'm trying to you know what do you think you, you, don't it's look Halloween at the child is when you're that talking. okay that's it uh, do you think it's Halloween that's why you're uh, huh. no. um that's the most important time of year for us really yeah, yeah. why because then you that's when I usually eat like a family oh wow. Did, 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 did you say, say eat a eat, family? I think yeah. you did. Is that what you do? Yeah. You eat the you're a cannibal in other words. You got the family over for dinner. There you go. Hello, Hello Clarice. Uh, Unbelievable. One one. Checks in. Yes. Yeah. I'm done meeting an old friend for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Who, who's that that who just dropped in on? Tell me about the lambs. Doctor Oh, there you go. <laughs> It's it's the floor is yours, one one. Eating the brains and frying it in the pan. What was that? Mm. That was in the second movie. Yeah, that was Hannibal. Yeah. Whew. Wow. Hmm. Gross. So, good, did you see it. that movie there, around Little Black Eyed Kid? Yeah, I wrote it. You wrote it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Silence of the Lambs? Is that you? Silence of the Lambs. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you could give Phil Yeber a run for his money there with that uh, impression. Hello, Clarice. Wow. Who knew, huh? <laughs> Real Fair day, Tom. Okay. Oh, boy. How dare I give him crickets? With right? a nice key auntie. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I can understand him wanting to eat Jodie Foster because See. she was... Whoa! We have ESP. Now, hang on. Jump. Hold on oh, a second. You know, I was about yeah, to I ask him. Jump the tank there. I was oh. about to ask him. I was just going to say one, one. <laughs> In 10 seconds. I, I Jody Foster, go. Jody Foster, 10 seconds. Jodie Foster is awesome. She doesn't give you any BS. She's never in the tabloids. She has a good record with movies and with people and yes. keeps her mouth shut and just to, just does her work. She's like that's what you like to keep when they keep yeah. their mouths quiet. Well, no, that's I mean, she's not out there, you know. You don't know who that was. That doing was stuff. Game. Yes. Okay. She's just doing her work and making great movies. Do you find her sexually tired now, do, you, do you find her sexually attractive? I do. You do, okay. In kind of a mellow, toned-down way. Huh. Like yeah. almost like average girl yeah. next door. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Black Eyed Kid, I don't think he has a clue what's going on with Jodie Foster. You know more Dr. about Lecter? this. Dr. Lecter? Dr. <laughs> Lecter? <laughs> <laughs> no, who's Jodie Foster? Yeah, you don't know who Jodie Foster is? She was in the um, Accused. Was she? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, okay. Yeah. Oh, the Room. Yeah, The Room. I like pinball. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember well, that one. Uh, Cobra, you want to educate him or just? No, I was just because I knew New Hotel New Hampshire, I thought, was uh, one of her early great works. Okay. All right. Uh, Max Zapola, famous author, do you want to educate these boys on what they might be missing? Jody Foster? I only know about the pool. The pool. The pool. The pool. The pool stick. Oh, the pool stick. Okay. Pool stick. Thank, you. Thank you. Max Zapola, very famous <laughs> author. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mark. I don't believe the <coughs> pool stick was actually, it was a pinball machine. Was it a that, pinball that, machine? That it was a pinball machine, and that was down in New Bedford. Maybe uh, that was a book. She's made ninety movies, and that's what you guys remember, right? That's what <laughs> maybe that was. Maybe that was the book. <laughs> Jody Foster is married to a woman, Juan Juan. No, only enhanced. <laughs> only enhanced. He just went white. Just really? Went, yes. Where have you been? Uh, no, I didn't know that. Yes. See, that's how quiet she is. Does it make it more sexy? Does it make it more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> What does that mean? Does it make her more sexually attractive? Yes, it does no for way. me. Yeah, all yeah. right. So, okay. yeah. No, I guess where have I been? I don't know. Yeah. Reading uh, too many Beatle magazines. There you or go. You got to be reading people in National Enquirer. That's right. <laughs> Isn't that funny, Dave, uh, little black eyed kid? Yeah, that's funny. He's yeah. funny. Yeah, he is funny. <laughs> you know? You would think How about he... Bat Boy, black eyed kid? Do you know anything about Bat Boy since we brought up National Enquirer? No, I don't. Who? I'm disappointed. What? What's Who? Bat Boy? Bat Boy? Famous uh, National Enquirer yes. uh, presence for many, many years. I thought maybe you two would have uh, worked bat together. Boy? Are you talking about a baseball game, Bat Boy, or, or no, no, Bat was... Boy, the human bat, human uh, bat hybrid that was it was graced the covers of National Enquirer and Midnight oh, Express, yeah. the different papers that used to <laughs> occupy the vaunted checkout lane yes. position. Yeah. The he's, world. He's Hillary, Clinton, drug store. Hillary he's Clinton was Clinton linked to Bad Boy. There was a yeah. scene where she had given birth. Now, okay, to Bad Boy. let's go. Let's move <laughs> on. Okay, all right. Black Eyed Kid, you don't read any of those tablets, no, do you? No, no. I'm, I'm not sick. 
You, you know, that is sick, right? Eating people, not so much. No, no. No, reading that yeah, stuff. I crossed the line. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's I'm a sorry, vegetarian. Yeah. The kid needs his nutrition. I mean, uh, her nutrition, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, you're dressed in like 50s clothes. I don't I don't know what this is going for. A retro look here, one line, or is this the yeah, clothes? So. The kid, yeah. It's the time I got trapped yeah. in. He was trapped in uh, the, the 50s? Sa Salvation Army store. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you must know who Chuck Berry is then, right? Chuck Berry? Do you know Chuck Berry? Yes. Yeah, okay. Guitarist. He's, no, he's not a terrorist. No, no. guitarists. Yeah. <laughs> guitarist, terrorist, terrorist. Guitarist, okay. I thought he said terrorist. Okay. <laughs> you know, he's a good guy. Just don't go to the bathroom in his restaurant. Other than that, True. great guy, great musician. Expect to be taped. There you go. And he doesn't meet with scotch tape. <gasps> Though it was scotch videotape, as it turned out. It was? Yeah. Something like 1,600 hours of oh, man. women going to the bathroom. He went to jail for it, you know, sixteen hundred dollars, you know, and and each each shot was like only like about two or three seconds, you know. So he had them cataloged and you know alphabetical order and that kind of stuff. Did Chuck. you string them together to make it like a yes, like a, a, a compilation? They call that in the business. Right. Whoops! Here, Chuck's calling us now. Chuck's okay. calling us from jail. Probably lawyer talking to lawyer right now. Chuck's been nice. dead for about six months. I'm he's, sorry. He's uh, reprising. Yeah. Now, back in the days of Chuck Berry, when yes. he was wicked popular. Yes. What was all the songs about being sixteen? Mm -mm. Another show, but yeah, yeah. he also got in you trouble know, with that. Yeah, sweet right. little 16, 16 candles. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. You're 16, you're beautiful in your mind. Yeah, yeah. they're down south. <laughs> down south. I don't want you know, I should whisper it because I you know we have a lot of great listeners down in the beautiful soul part of this country. I mean, I married the missus at 18, but you know. You're thinking of Jerry Lee Lewis. No. Jerry Lee Lewis like, married yeah. his cousin, right, and his cousin was 13. Yeah, 13, a, right. a black eyed kid, you knew that, right? Yeah, yeah, we were friends. Yeah, we were your <laughs> friends. Were you really, really? She was that, yeah? You know, okay, would you play with Bobbies together, that type of thing? Mm -hmm. What was your favorite uh, Jerry Lee Lewis song? Uh -oh. Balls of Fire. Oh, wait. Balls of Fire. <laughs> I'll approve Goodness it. Gracious. This kid is a writer. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, wow. So, so you should back, trap back in the 50s, he she. Uh, Jerry yes. Lee Lewis, um, you know, uh, Jack Berry. I got a Jerry Lee Lewis record on Sun Records. It says Jerry Lee Lewis and his pumping piano. Wow, there you go. The pumping piano. The pumping pianist. There you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he's... You know, pianist? He's, is he exactly. still alive? <laughs> he's got quite a track record, too. He does. Mm -hmm. You know? And I know there was one point where the guy who owned Sun Records said, I'm going to put everyone out on the road. So it was Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis. Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash and one more. Elvis was on something. The crazy along. guy, Jerry Lee Lewis. And he said they would they just they, they never made any money. They drank it all away. They mm. just went crazy. Six months sorry. Nuts. Nuts. Mm. You know? What a, that that's a movie to make if you did yeah. it really good. Anyway, little kid from Black Eyed Kid. You know who Elvis is, right? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. I mean do you like him thank or you, thank you very much. What what's the matter? You, you he's know? doing an Elvis. Yeah. He's oh, doing I an Elvis. See. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Black okay. Eyed Kid impression. Black Eyed oh. Kid will soon is lost. Has left, has left the building. Yeah. <laughs> Black Eyed Black Eyed Kid's got a career in impressions. Yeah. yeah that's true. that was a good yeah. help us. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, I'll see you in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet you will. That's your only favorite places. <laughs> I'm not going out there alone. Now we'll have to go out there in a group. Is that okay? a brick you have in your yeah. hand there, Black Eyed Kid? Are you just happy to see me? Oh, wow. See, you know, I heard that joke. In, <laughs> heard that joke in the second grade. Never gets a oh, laugh. I bet you get a lot of people saying they're happy to see you. I, I, don't they, Black Eyed Kid? Yeah. The, uh... We're very misunderstood. Why? In what way? Please explain. We just want to be friends. Want to be friends? Go yeah, ahead. forever. <laughs> and have, happy for dinner? And ever. What and you... ever. Yeah. <laughs> That's what old cannibals say. They say they just want to eat their victims because they want them to be part of them. You're not really violent or mean or anything, right? No, Just, no. No. Nope. No. It's quick. <laughs> it's quick. Oh, man. <laughs> Black eyed kid. Won't, won't feel a thing. Wow. Yeah. Hey, got this kind of passive aggressive tood to the kid. Jeez. <laughs> you know? I'll scare you now, and now I'm going to be looking on the roof yeah. of my car, in yeah. the trunk, underneath the seat. Yeah. On the shower? Yeah. On the shower. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> Wow, it's yeah. bad enough. I'm afraid of containers now. I got container phobia. There you go. <laughs> right now we can't go. So, um, what do you do? I mean, I should. You know, one of our uh, emails just asked, "What? How do you prepare human flesh for eating that kid? Black-eyed uh, kid? Do you put 
little yeah, satisfy yeah, sign, a little yeah, barbecue First sauce. I wear the skin. Oh, okay. All right. And then we get the herbs ready for a nice rub. <laughs> and then we cook them. So good. So you eat the skin. No, I wear it. Okay. He wears <laughs> it. Unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you. What if it doesn't fit? Do a little nip, a little tuck? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nip and tuck. <laughs> yeah. Wow, we, we're <laughs> learning a lot tonight from the black yeah. eyed kid. Do you find a lot He's of gross. shrinkage? <laughs> what? Yeah. If I wash it first, I don't wash it. I'm just trying to understand it. Only if I wash. Only if you wash wash, the wash it in cool water and drip dry. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the secret. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't look really well fed. Are we supposed to take some kind of a maybe hint from that? You hungry? Yeah. Well, he's looking at us, you know. Like, yeah. You, you stop yeah. bugging him about his well fedness. Hey, you're the, you're the skinny one in this duel. <laughs> yeah, the one one. You're, you're gonna, gonna be safe. Get, that's right. He's not gonna get a lot out of me. <laughs> probably run faster than me too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I want to eat one once. Whoa. Oh, wow. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Ouch. Black eyed kid. I'm out of here. Black eyed kid. Come on. What are you doing to Holy us? Holy mackerel. That's it for wow. my career. I better watch out. And now I got to go. Yeah. In, I guess. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh. That's a lot of colors mm-hmm. <laughs> and shades. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Sit with Jeff and, you know, surgically remove that. Oh, man. Well, this blank guy is wise <laughs> It's, maybe you are the one in danger than one. Right? I guess. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, now no. I'm going to have nightmares. See, you know, here's the thing about Juan Juan. He has this attraction to him. Any kind of, uh, you know, email or fan mail we get are always females asking about you, Juan It's Juan. insane. I don't know yeah. why. Or at like, least they're saying they're females. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't make any difference. On the internet, it doesn't make any difference to me. No one knows you're a dog, right? In the That's internet. right. Is that what you said? That's right. Okay. I could be naked for anybody else knows, you know. Oh, wow. Not in front of the black eyes. If it gets any warmer in here, I think I'm going to yeah, I know. You're you know, yep. be down to my skin. Uh-oh. Black eyes. Oh, oh, oh. will love that. Yeah, yeah. Turn up the so heat. if turn we were to link all these interesting. I got some moles on my skin. Is that a problem? No, no, no. That's the <laughs> point. Holy cow. <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> oh. We should probably. He just uh, gave me the sign of like, yeah. you know, licking his chops. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, I think we need to take a break. I'm uh, going to get uh, yeah. out of here. Uh, how are we going to get them out of here? Go downstairs. And Black Eyed Kid, you got anything last words you want to say? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm never leaving. And good luck sleeping. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, there you go. Perfect. He's going right. to hide in the backseat of my car on the yeah. way home. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we give him a, cl- uh, yeah, a okay, round of I'll applause? See you, I'll yeah, see let's you make soon. him feel good so he doesn't eat us. See you on the way out. Thanks. There you go. Okay. Let's see. Okay. What do you want? Twenty bucks or something, kid? You, you went to. Yeah, here's a gift certificate. You need a bite. I was gonna say you need a bite to eat, but I didn't want to go there. Yeah. yeah. Send them to Kentucky Fried Chicken. I eat the skin oh. there all the time. There you go. Does that interest you? <laughs> yes. Sir. Okay. Basically saying, just get him fatter, and then boom. <laughs> Thank you, Black Eyed Kid. Thank you. Okay. All right. See you later. I see a great future ahead of the Black Eyed Kid. Yeah, I do too. So listen, why don't we take a commercial break now, the one one? And settle yeah, down. Calm down. Sheesh. Okay. And um, we'll be right back after this. So you're listening to Mac Maloney's Mill Track Style Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after this. Over the years, Air Force Major Hawk Hunter and his band of patriotic fighter pilots have fought tirelessly to reunite a fractured America, devastated by a Russian sneak attack. Now, returning from a mysterious space odyssey, Hunter finds a huge Russian army occupying New York City, ready to invade the rest of America. Buzzing through the city's skyscraper canyons in a tiny top-secret ghost plane and seeing the invaders' massive weaponry for himself, Hawk realizes he's up against the greatest danger his homeland has ever faced. 
But equally alarming are reports claiming that Hawk's former girlfriend, Dominique, is living with the head of the Russian secret police in a Manhattan penthouse. Is she his prisoner? Or is she something else? With the woman and the country he loves in dire peril, Hawk Hunter, the wingman, will apply all his aviation prowess to launch the most crucial battle for America yet, no matter what the risks. Filled with fast-paced action, a wide range of aircraft and military hardware, Battle for America brings back your favorite characters from earlier books in the Wingman series and delivers a riveting story that reveals new insight on America's most famous hero, the Wingman. That's Wingman 18, The Battle for America. On sale now at Amazon.com and available at your local bookstore. After the events of 9-11, We thought America would never be the same. Our homeland was attacked. Our fellow Americans killed by terrorists. It seemed like all hope was lost. Until a special group of patriots came together and defied the Pentagon and vowed to take revenge, but in their own way. They took the battle to the terrorist doorstep, turning the tables on the murderers, fighting with no rules, taking no prisoners, until they became terrorists themselves. This is the story of the Super Hawks, soldiers so secret even the president didn't know they existed. Their mission was to kill bin Laden, but they wound up saving the world. Super Hawks, a new series for Kindles and Nooks by Mac Maloney, available on Amazon.com. I'm Liam Neeson. You're listening to the Mac Maloney Military X-Files show on Distant Thunder Radio Network. If you don't listen to him, I have a particular set of skills, and I will find you. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. In the studio with us tonight, the very same as Juan Juan is here. Yes, sir, I'm here. Thank you every minute of it. Right. Uh, Oh, really? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Glad that's on tape. Good night. Uh, and you're uh, awash in Tom Brady gear of again, course, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, okay. I remember last week, I, mm-hmm. or a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't. Uh, now, do you go shopping uh, at a certain time of year for the new gear that will come out like in about a month or so? Before I keep season? an eye on what's going on with the Patriots Pro Shop. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They got jewelry. They got jewelry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Handcrafted jewelry. <laughs> I don't, know if, I don't know if there's any earrings that look like Tom Brady, but there are. I'm getting some for myself. Not, that's what I was going to get you for Christmas, Juan Juan. You're I, think there's, I think there's earrings that look like the Super Bowl. It'll go really nice with um, your belly button piercing, your Tom right. Brady belly so, button piercing. That's another, <laughs> see, that's another dig at no belly button man. You see how he kind of yeah. can, can jump into something? If it says TB12 or something like that, I'm all over it. Wow. Okay. Also in the studio with us tonight, uh, at a disclosed location, one studio over, Mina Cobra is here. Yep. Good evening, gentlemen. Have we saluted My him yet? Uh, if so, it's no, so he, long ago, I can't remember. I exchanged salutes with Juan Juan earlier, so that covers it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that covers it? That's right. I can, okay. You guys right. can salute. I can stand down. President uh, is uh, half the law. Also in the studio with us tonight. A celebrity drop in the very famous uh, author, Max Lapula, is here. Dropped in on us. Hello, gentlemen. It's Dropped a pleasure in. to be here. You guys have a hard Did time uh, shaking me, huh? Did you see the lights flashing <laughs> up here? Is what we get reports of uh, from our owner last week. Remember that one, one? Yeah. Reports no. of lights flashing. It was three things. Lights yeah. flashing, mm-hmm. women going at all hours of the night. Right. And yeah. smoke billowing smoke, out of the room. Oh, was it smoke? Okay. Yeah. Right. Smoke why, billowing. Smoke down near the front door. That's why I came by. But uh, <laughs> yeah, came in, in, yeah. really, really disappointed like when I came signal. in. Okay. You know, Were these the neighbors from across I the I still street? like you guys, though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> If that ever happens one one, you'll be the first to know. Okay, good. Okay. Code word for that operation will be gumdrops. Okay. <laughs> you know Mike Zapula, the last longshoreman on yeah. Amazon and uh, and buy it. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Good. It's, it's a cool book. It's a cool book. It's about crime in Boston before Whitey Bulger makes Whitey Bulger look like I don't want to say Boy Scout, I don't want to get mad at me, but it's okay you know, get mad at me. Uh, they were rough people, you know, yeah. before Whitey. On the waterfront, yeah. In South Boston, yeah. Thanks for dropping in. Hey, anytime, guys, you know. And Mark, do you ever fear any oh, gangster dependence uh, 
getting back at you or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely. If, no, absolutely not. If Howie Kai made it through alive, I think. Uh, well, that's yeah, true. yeah you well, get that so, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all good. All good. Yeah. Yeah. Howie yeah. Kai was the columnist in Boston, and, with, and with the he, exploding basketball in his yeah, mailbox. I, I don't. Or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with anything he says, but he's got guts, man, because he would write a story about why you punch ev- almost every day for yeah. years, Did you know, care. just in telling the story about what was really going on, and finally. They catch up with Whitey, but yeah, he, they could have knifed him off at any, at any, at any moment. They sent the message, you know. Yeah, they but quieted him down. Did they really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They they got to him. We finally. Really? Oh, the, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They sent the. I don't know what it was, but they sent the message. The pansy man. <laughs> <Instead of>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. You were talking about recently, the last couple of years or something? No, no, I'm going back. Going, I'm going back. Uh, really? Yeah. Probably fifteen. Yeah, I'd say 15 years. Oh, so he, before he wrote the book. Before I mean, well before he uh, went on the run. Oh, went, oh wow. You know. You know, it's funny because, you know, you always hear these, uh, you know, criminals are never really smart people is what they usually say, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at least he had like a getaway plan. He really had like he a did. getaway plan. You he know, he did. had money stashed in like seven or eight cities and he would just jet between them and he'd have like, you know, 200,000 bucks in the wall. It helps to have an assist from the FBI, you know. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's you know, true. The 10 most wanted list. Uh, <laughs> 10 most wanted. Right? We do not want to find this. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. So. Boy, really. It tripped down Boston Lane there. Yeah. Mike Sapula, the last longshoreman. Go on Amazon.com and buy it. You won't be, uh, you won't regret it. It's really cool, and you can thank see you. what we are the products of, right? All. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, thank you, Mike, right, for me. joining us. Thanks for thanks for having popping me. in. Thanks yeah. for having. I mean, I feel good about my Charlestown roots. You know, as, as being yeah. just a weekend townie. <laughs> a weekend townie, you'd yeah. go there, yeah. The, just, for, just to visit grandma on the weekend. Okay, all right. We can use that again, right? Yeah. <laughs> I knew my way around, though. Oh, yeah. Right sure, down Charleston, yeah. My territory was uh, Sullivan Square to, to the Bunker Hill Monument. Wow, man. That's that was my big... hood. And what did you do? Go and urinate in every in, corner in, just in, so the other dogs? in every corner. Free donuts <laughs> went into the oh, really? <laughs> little convenience store, which back then was called the you know the the uh, <laughs> penny candy store. I can see a little one one coming up to the... Could you, you know, maybe you can imitate. I'll have a donut and some root beer barrels, please. Thank you. Thank you. What did he say, like, way back then when saying that? I, I used, you know, you're a kid. Hi, I want to eat donuts <laughs> and unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> That's and what the, little one one sounded like back then. Donuts and the dots on the paper. Really, like yeah? The candy dots that <laughs> peel off the paper. <laughs> yeah. Love those. I don't know. He's the one that eat more paper than candy. He did. Yes. <laughs> and I get the free Necco wafers uh, when I lived in Cambridge. Really? Yeah. What, did yeah. you go to the door of the yeah, factory? Yeah, walk, walk through Central Square by the factory. And, one uh, of the oldest confections in the United yeah. States, Necco. They yeah. went to uh, the Civil War with uh, wow. Union troops. Did they? You sure they didn't sell the wow. Necco wafers to the rebels? You I'm know, very sure they went I'm to war to with the Union troops. Businesses well, on the in the East there you go, one sold one. to both sides. There you go. They're notorious for that. So who didn't say nickel candy might have been one of part New of New England Confectionery Company. Mm. Hey, little kid, do you eat nickel candy? You, have, you know what nickel wafers are? Yeah. Yeah, you like them? Mm, no, they oh. don't taste good. Oh, really? Okay. So I would have thought the black ones would have been your favorite because oh, they looked like your eyes. Oh, Surprise. <laughs> this is the last segment. <laughs> Anyway, hey, switch. So, switch, uh, yeah. Yeah. so we you got to yeah. visit Boston one of these days. Oh, and yeah, visit these and to tell locations that we're talking about. Yeah, well, we'd love to share around Boston, you know, yeah. in one night. W- right, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go to each uh, neighborhood in one night. That'd be fun. We'll start right. off in the cell tent, okay. So, Switch, you there? Switch, you there? Well, oh, switch. I'm, I'm here, right? Oh, I, have <laughs> here too, so I, I thought I'd wait, uh, you know. <laughs> He was my, Googling uh, every place that we... He doesn't want to upset about. Mac and jump the gun. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with this uh, upset Mac there, Cobra? Is this part of your uh, plan to increase the number of sound effects you can do per show? How about that I for a sentence? I any of my assigned sound effects, so I don't think that that's true at all, sir. And under advisement of my attorney, I will not be answering that question. Oh, wow. Hmm. So, oh, hey, hey, little kid, that sounded like a lawyer wrote that, right? Yes, you are. <laughs> so switch. Yes. Status. Okay. We were talking a couple of weeks ago about how in Washington State there seems to be a convergence of like um, Bigfoot sightings and UFO sightings. Is that? Do I have That's it? right. And we we talked. Uh, we kind of teased it a little bit, but uh, we started out with this uh, in 1959, April. Uh, there was this uh, uh, a C-118 plane had taken off, and it uh, all of a sudden there's a, uh, a mayday call 
and they say, you know, mayday, mayday, we've hit something. And then that's it. <clears throat> the plane crash landed uh, between uh, Orting and Summer, Washington State. And uh, this was actually, this was reported by Frank Edwards. We remember Frank yeah, Edwards sure. and those yeah. great books he used to write, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, apparently they, they immediately, the military came in, cordoned off the area. Nobody could get in. And, uh, and so it was, everything was shut down. Now, uh, some of the investigators from APRO, that was the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, one of the really good uh, UFO organizations at the time, and of course, long defunct, uh, they located several of the witnesses that saw this thing go down. And they said that this plane seemed to be pursued by some kind of orange-yellow objects, uh, more, it seemed like they're like, like orbs or something like that. They didn't really uh, call it a metallic object, but you know, just some type of strange light had been following this craft before it went down. And there had been several reports of these strange lights in that area earlier. Uh, of course, a, there was a spokesman from McCord Air, Air Force Base, and he said, you know, nothing to see here. What the people had seen were parachute flares. Mm -hmm. Well, they okay. always come up with that excuse. That's what they said in Phoenix, mm -hmm. too. The, the Phoenix lights. It's parachute parachute flare. flares. Sure. It's always Go ahead, please. Yeah. So now we flash uh, forward from 1959 to the early 70s. Uh, a lady named Sally Shepard Wolford and her husband John and her three daughters moved to this uh, a very small cabin in Ording in the same general area. And right along the, uh, I, I guess it's pronounced Carbon River, C-A-R-B-O-N. Mm. Uh, and anyway, this is a really very rural area. They have a few neighbors, a very small cabin for this number of people to be crammed in. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the significance is now her her youngest daughter uh, Autumn Autumn Williams okay. is going to be known by uh, any anybody that's interested in Bigfoot or Bigfoot researchers. She grew up to be very very prominent in the Bigfoot community and hmm. a really good researcher. What's her name again? No. Autumn Williams. Wow. Now sounds this like, is chronicled in, sounds in like a someone book appearing that, at that kittens right down the street, doesn't it? Autumn Williams. Sorry, Steve. Go ahead. Please. <laughs> right. James Bond villain's girlfriend. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mag, this is serious stuff, okay? Oh, I know. No. Yeah. Okay. Knock it off one, now, one. Come on, it's serious. I'm listening. Now, uh, Sally uh, wrote uh, a book in later years to kind of, uh, uh, tell, you know, when, when Autumn became interested in Bigfoot and so forth, she didn't really, she was only like uh, about, about three to five when she was living in this area. She didn't remember too much of it. So Sally wrote the book called Valley of the Skookum, that's S-K-O-O-K-U-M, which is the Native American, one of the many Native American words for Bigfoot. And to chronicle all the bizarre stuff that happened there. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, now, uh, 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 Sally started hearing, when she'd, she'd go to sleep at night, her husband John would go out. Now, he's super skeptical. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't tell him any of the, of the stuff that she started to see. Uh but, uh, oh, before I get to that, I wanted to mention that uh, she had a, uh, one of her neighbors was uh, named Yodi, a Native American lady. And what they did was they, uh, she had read this report about this uh, collision or crash, whatever it was, mm -hmm. in Frank Edwards' book. So they decided, why don't they go to the local newspaper and see what they can find out? Mm -hmm. And so they, they get there and they find out they've had new owners. And they're not they're kind of uh, disorganized. So they, they had to go back and actually put the... Uh, the papers in order themselves, and I'm, I'm, I suspect this was just a weekly, you okay. know, to, because the, otherwise it would have been unmanageable, because they actually had some issues that dated back to the late 1800s. Hmm. Wow. So they, anyway, they. Long story short, they go in, they get down to the date that this is supposed to have happened, mm -hmm. and the newspaper is missing, and then it's also missing for several days afterwards. Wow. What was the date? Which, what what date were they looking uh, for? Eight, well, April 1st was the first date. Oh, all right, April 1st. Right. Which, uh, <laughs> That's a humor, which lines right? up pretty good. <laughs> right. um, okay, so uh, then as, uh, as time goes on, uh, well, actually one of the first incidents, uh, uh, they had a, all they had was this little wood stove to cook and to heat mm -hmm. initially. When they, later on, they got electricity. But so uh, when, the, uh, when John was at work, and the older girls were in school, uh, Sally and her daughter Autumn would go out and they'd pick up wood and sticks and so forth. Well, one, one misty morning, uh, after they hadn't been there very long, Sally looks up and sees 
a seven foot tall hairy Bigfoot wow. standing looking at her. Oof. Next to it is a, a one about half the size, hmm. and they're just kind of standing there. Hmm. Wow. So, so like, she tells like, like, a, like a parent and a, and a child, in other words. Apparently. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Hey, uh, or, oh, I'm sorry. Or, little, or, little kid uh, in a studio. What do you think of that? Uh, a big Bigfoot, and then a half size Bigfoot. Well, I don't like being um, at waist level. <laughs> okay. I can see why. Sorry about that switch. Go ahead, please. Okay. I switch. Why we're obviously trying to compose ourselves here. You said a hairy Bigfoot. Have we had any reports of non-hairy Bigfoot? You mean like a shaven Bigfoot? Actually, uh, there are some that uh, are much, uh, supposedly much less hairy. And in, in fact, these two looked uh, very human. When, when Autumn was asked in later years, I mean, she vaguely remembered this incident as a child. She didn't think anything of it. I mean, her mother told her, you know, turn around and don't run, just walk away. And then she, Sally ran, grabbed her, and they took off. Uh, but as Autumn remembers it, they, they looked very human to her, only with more hair. And in the early 70s, when people were, you know, lost in a, a, a sea of hair and facial hair, she just thought, it's no big deal. They're just, they look like my father's friends. So to the mind of the child, they didn't look, they didn't look very uh, simian, let's put it that way. Okay. All right. They looked like Chewbacca. Well, no, they, didn't look, they didn't look that different in that part of the world. So can I ask you a question? Why were these people living in such a remote location? Never get a, uh, uh, you know? I, I don't, I'm not sure why they picked the area. They picked the cabin because it was all the only thing they could afford. Oh, wow. I okay. mean, it was very, very rustic, very, uh, you know, very no, uh, no frills. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just were, you know, in a situation, a financial situation yeah, where right. they uh, had to do that. So. Right, right. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. So they see these two big feet and what happened? Right. Well, and then night after night, she, she's hearing these large animals or whatever moving through the woods, uh, smashing trash cans sometimes. She'd smell the, that's horrible odor that's associated with these things sometimes. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Uh, her husband would be sound asleep, and she couldn't even wake him up. And this sounds very similar to some actually other paranormal or UFO incidents where one person is awake and uh, is unable to you know, awaken the other person for mm -hmm. some reason. Right, yeah. But no, she, she actually didn't tell him of this incident because she knew how skeptical he was. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, you know, you, you look at this thing and there's all kinds of other things that happened. Uh, now, her, her friend Yodi, uh, her family, was also experiencing a lot of this, this weird stuff. Uh, uh, they also had a sort of a strange, like, poltergeist uh, phenomena happen in the house. Mm -hmm. the, the lights would go on and off without the flipping the light switch the burners on the stove would turn on by themselves mm. the washer once they got a washer it would fill by itself wow. and her husband couldn't figure it out he was an electrician and the electrical part he couldn't uh, he absolutely he you know would rewire stuff and and pull his hair out trying to figure out what was going on mm. wow. now his first dose of reality was when the carbon river flooded they uh, they nearly lost their cabin, and I guess some of their friends did. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was uh, John was out checking on uh, neighbors to see how they were doing, and he and one of his uh, one of his uh, neighbors looked across the river, and they saw uh, in in full view daylight a Bigfoot climbing up the bank, mm -hmm. and it would stop, it would turn around and look at them, and then turn back around and then keep climbing up the bank until it went over the rise, and they couldn't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow! But even then. He, he he just flatly he was in shock when he got mm -hmm. home, and he didn't say what happened. His friend did. Friend told Sally, mm -hmm. and he he just uh, he still a, he was in denial right. on, on, for at least for a period of time. Plus, you got to think, you know, who would hoax it then? It's, it's during a flood, you know, people's houses being washed away and so on. Yeah, you why know, bother? Why why do of all the times to do a hoax? Yeah, hey, I'm drowning, but I'm going to do a yeah. quick. There you go, yeah. quick laugh. Yeah. Right. yeah, before you go. Sure. <laughs> Anyway, okay, please, Steve. Uh, the strangeness continued. Yodi's daughter saw one of the Bigfoots at night, 
and she saw it clearly enough, even though it was dark. And then all of a sudden, it vanished. I mean, it didn't didn't melt into the trees. Mm-hmm. It simply just disappeared. Um, one once there was one pretty spectacular night. They actually got uh, they couldn't. Yodi and uh, Sally, their their houses were just far enough apart they couldn't see each other. Mm-hmm. There's the path that connected them, but they got CBs where they could talk back and forth to each other. Mm-hmm. Well, one night Yodi and her husband witnessed. Uh, three Bigfoots for a long period of time, just kind of in their yard, moving around. Mm-hmm. And it was, it really freaked out her husband. Mm-hmm. And and the her, her daughter, uh, Emily, also witnessed it. Mm-hmm. And it was really strange because uh, you, I think you've, you've heard of situations where people have, uh, uh, have some kind of UFO encounter mm-hmm. or, or something like that, and their personality changes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. That's well, what, that's a Emily, Emily, one, one, right? That's Your right. personality changed before yeah. they you got Especially to when I'm probed. <laughs> He's just begging for it, and he gets it. Hate it when that happens. Go ahead, please. Well, Emily had been this shy and retiring young lady, and she just completely changed. She became uh, incredibly outgoing. She wouldn't shut up. She was just, <laughs> uh, you know, full of life and exuberance. Yeah. Her husband, on the other hand, turned into kind of a wimp. He kind of withdrew within himself. He'd wrap himself in blankets and drink tea after he yeah. saw the, you know, had this experience. It just yeah. absolutely freaked him out. Okay. Right. Wow. Well, what happened so, there? One, 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 one uh, took psychology in college. Uh, I did. Yeah. What do you, what do you think about that? At first, wrapping, they, wrapping yourself in. Well, no, the, the woman was very, uh, you know, kind of a um, uh, not the dominant part of the couple. The husband was. They see a UFO, and all of a sudden, they're. Uh, their rules change, it seems. Well, obviously they were abducted, and then they just decided to switch brains. Switch brains, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So it was probably a switch, uh, yeah. switch a brain room. switching operation. That's right. Okay. All right. So that that fills in all the blanks. You, right? you suck the you suck the, uh, the brain, the brain matter? energy out of the brain. Oh, okay. And okay. Then okay. Put it in the other brain. I see. And do the same thing. And it was funny because she got stronger and funnier, and he couldn't shut her up after that. So that's when he started putting blankets around him and drinking yeah. tea. Right? Okay. Now, Sally and John couldn't see. I mean, they were, they were hearing what was going on over the CB. But when they looked at the path connecting it, they could see, John could see footprints appear in the dirt. Hmm. But nothing was there. Wow. That that was that got his attention enough that he became a believer that something really bizarre was going on. But isn't it strange? Uh, and we've talked about this before. I mean, uh, because a lot of people say that they, that big, you know, bigfoots just disappear. Just they'll see them and they'll they're there one minute and then they're gone. Almost like they have this, ninjas. you know what I mean? This kind you of see, you ability, see which though. which it, but they see the footprints. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some kind of I don't know. I hate to say it because it's down Star Trek and so on, but like a cloaking, you know, mm-hmm. like cloaking. But why would some kind of a animal that doesn't even wear clothes why would they come up why would they have some kind of technology like that or or see like the predator effect like we've talked about right. before hey, jack nicholson you were in predator weren't you no no okay. but arnold was oh arnold i i mix you guys up all the time how yeah. was it how was it working with the predator i heard the predator was yeah, paying the too ass. many demands yeah couldn't, wouldn't come out of his trailer and no, stuff diva. Yeah, okay. diva. yeah that's uh that's code for drama queen <laughs> Thank you, Arnold, for filming yeah. us. Yeah. Please, Steve. I'm glad Arnold okay. was here. It gets, it gets weirder. Okay. No. I can't imagine uh, that. But. They start experiencing these orange orbs about basketball size start to appear and sometimes chase cars. And on, on their section of the river, they began to okay, hear loud... I just want to be clear here. No, wait, wait. I just want to be clear here. Hold on. Okay. Man orange part. orbs the size of basketballs. Yeah. Yes. Maybe they were basketballs. No chance they were basketballs. Uh, unlikely. Why? Uh, hard to bounce basketballs in the woods. That's true. That's true. Not even the Boston Celtics. Larry Bird could do that. Right, one one. Right. Don't piss them off. Either. Don't piss them off. Okay. Just go on YouTube and say, why you don't get married. What was it? We had the words. Why you don't get Larry Bird mad at you yes. is what it is. And um, he just, you know, someone pushed him down real quick. Bloodied his nose, and then for like the next, it was just a little bit more than half of the game, he scored 40 points. <laughs> he was the only one who scored in the Celtics. Just he, he didn't miss a shot. Didn't miss a shot. You know, that's why you don't get him pissed off at you. Anyway, All right, we digress. We're really going down the uh, Boston switch, highways bring, and byways. Switch, bring us so. back to this. I want to hear so the. So we should bring Switch here, and then he'd know he'd be the, uh, yeah, he'd be experienced. I want to hear, the, con- want to hear the conclusion of this. <laughs> Please, right now. Switch. Good. Okay, well, okay, there's several weird things. Uh, they just started hearing uh, loud pounding noises. 
and the ground would vibrate. Been there. They'd hear the sounds of machinery. It sounded much like yeah. a factory or whatever. Oh, okay. And they'd even get blasts of heat mm. like a factory. <clears throat> but wow. it seemed to be coming from underground. Uh, also, there was a... Uh, they discovered that the meteor had struck the area in the early 50s oh, wow. and had left a crater the size of a basketball field. Oh. I mean, a basketball field, cool. a baseball field. A baseball field, okay. All right, okay. And uh, so they, they, they contacted a guy named Clarence who remembered that it happened. He showed them the area, and then he, he says, he leaves, says kind of ominously, he says, uh, you know, you should be careful about checking out things like this and... Uh, uh, the things that they're into, because you may be visited by the men. Wow, the men. And he just kind of left it hanging like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, <laughs> one thing that came out was that, you know, there are some people that believe that the geology of the area, uh, limestone and so forth, and iron have maybe uh, some effect on attracting these energies or whatever, for what mm -hmm. it's worth. Mm -hmm. Well, the meteor was examined, and it was virtually uh, all made of iron. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Uh, but then we get into John Keel territory. Yes, okay. Great author. Okay. Yodi's daughter got a call from a voice wanting to talk to her mother. Mm -hmm. It was one of these strange mechanical voices. Oh, wow. Okay. It might be right here in the studio with us. What was that? Uh... Put your mom on. <laughs> Not quite. Thank you. <laughs> Please. Stay. I'm sorry. The next morning, the next morning, Yodi found two men at the door, classic men in black, mm -hmm. uh, black suits, fedora, Hats, mm -hmm. uh, Ray -Bans. Said, eye color, they, please. I they, believe their child may be here. Could you confirm their eye color? Because their child may be with us. <laughs> I can't yeah. confirm the eye color. I, well, are they black? Unfortunately, they may be black-eyed adults. That, that's good enough, anyway. Okay. <laughs> but they were odd-looking. They had kind of the classic, uh, you know, uh, sort of sort of Asian countenance, but definitely not Asian. Mm, yeah. Uh, so forth. Uh, they said they were encyclopedia salesmen. Again, shades of oh, 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 those guys. <laughs> yes. Right. So Yodi called her bluff. He, he said, "What a okay. crafty cover!" <laughs> no, if I've I, ever heard no. one. I, I would like to see a sample, and it's almost like they were, weren't ready for that. So humma, said, humma. we'll have to go back to our car. And they're speaking in a monotone, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they went back to the car, and then she never saw him again. The odd part is, I mean, that's odd enough, but they weren't wearing any shoes. Oh, they. So okay. No. Right. We've heard other reports of, I've heard uh, John Keel upon reports where they, these guys would come to the door, they, they'd notice their shoes, how so perfect and, and shine they are, mm -hmm. yet they walk through a, a muddy uh, pathway to get there. So mm -hmm. this is, I don't know what this is. Self-shining like shoes, right there, Cobra? Just like the self-licking ice cream? <laughs> Cobra? I'm not even going to dig up by that with a comment. Let's just continue to move In other words, on. He was elsewhere, else, you know, occupying elsewhere. No, I... I mean, we he he says he just left it hanging. Nothing. Now oh. we're talking about self-licking ice cream and shoes. <laughs> you know, and I'm supposed to jump in and react. Yes, no, that's I'm what you're here for. <laughs> in, in an obvious switch, continue. Anyway, please. This sounds. This actually sounds more believable than self-licking ice cream. I, I just oh, thought I'd. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, does. excellent name for a band. Go ahead. Uh, they had more encounters with the men in black. It, have you remember the phantom photographers from the Mothman prophecies where yes. they would, these guys would set up a camera and take their picture. That happened to Yodi. Uh, Sally also saw these guys uh, driving around in their cars. Um, there, there was, uh, uh, they went to, they wanted to get hold of Clarence, you know, the meteor guy again. Uh, his uh, phone was disconnected. Mm. So they went to his house. He wasn't there anymore. He mm. was gone. Uh, None of this really made any sense, you know, as usual. Um, so they had also, the, uh, uh, the, the television set had bizarre interference with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the whole whole litany of, of right. strange stuff. They even, here's here's one of the weirdest things that happened. You've all, we've all heard of, uh, you know, alleged wood knocks that supposedly Bigfoot makes back and forth to communicate, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. There was a sound like a wood knock coming from a tree in the area. Hmm. And it was, it was coming from the tree. They put their hands on the tree. They'd feel the vibration. Hmm. And it did, didn't last forever, but they, there was no explanation as to what, you know, what was causing it. Right, right. So, so, when so you, what do you call them? Wood knocks? Yeah, wood knocks. They, they make, you know, on, on those shows, Finding Bigfoot or whatever, they're yes. always out there. They're doing their, their moronic Bigfoot calls and they, uh, uh, knock on the tree, and, and if they hear a wood knock in return, supposedly that's oh. the Bigfoot 
uh, answering them. Oh, okay. Yes. You don't yes. hear it like you don't hear it. You hear it like put, by putting your ear to the tree, like the vibration. Well, well, no, it. oh no, you hear it. You hear it. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Uh, wow. But, but this is this was a, a really bizarre, uh, uh, you know, uh, situation. If true, uh, that it was actually emanating from the tree, and I've never heard can of you, anything like that. Right. Can you confirm that they use the shave and a haircut method of the knock? Boom, boom. <laughs> yes. No. Right. Just, you, you have to do the audio there. I think that should count as one of his sound effects. I'm afraid you know. that was unconfirmed. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, there was there was no resolution to this. Uh, Sally moved away. There was some it was some falling out with some friends and so forth. There was there was some painful memories associated with this. Plus, I mean, the 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 weirdness was we kept accelerating. I mean, it just kept getting stranger and stranger, and they moved away. So she just buried this. She didn't uh, want to talk about it or, mm -hmm. or anything. And then about 20 years later, and Autumn was uh, probably some, well, I'm sure somewhere in her 20s, yes. she was talking to her mom on the phone, and she said, Mom, uh, do you remember seeing some strange animals where we used to live in Ording? Mm -hmm. And then it all kind of came back. Wow. And then, so she started telling her daughter the things that happened, and her daughter was already, you know, into the Bigfoot research at this time. Right. So she sat down and wrote this. This is a, really an excellent book. I know this is a, it was a wild ride and there's all kinds of strange stuff in here, but mm -hmm. excellently, very well written book. Uh, I got a chance to hear Sally Shepard Wolford interviewed some years ago right. uh, on Darkness Radio. Very uh, interesting lady. What's, very, the name of the uh, book? What's the name of the book again? Valley of the Skookum, S K O O K U M. Wow. Isn't Sally Shepard Wolford. Isn't that a Filipino word there? Uh, I don't one? think so. No. All right. Uh, just spell it one more time there, please. Which uh, S K O O K U M. Okay. All right. And it's an Indian word, a Native American word. Yes, yeah, one of the many. There, there are many Native American right. words for Bigfoot, depending on the tribes mm -hmm. and so forth. Right. Yeah. I remember someone was on one time, and they said that you know that there's some truth to the Bigfoot, you know, story because all the tribes up in, especially the Pacific Northwest, who usually didn't, in their myths, they're they're all like. Large rabbits, large foxes, large wolves, large flying hunters. It's never like dinosaurs and stuff. You know, it's it's something that they see just, you know, kind of expanding. And, um, but they said, but something like 200 out of three, uh, 250 tribes had some kind of word for, for Bigfoot. Oh, and another thing, uh, they would, she would hear the, the chatter, the Bigfoot chatter. Uh, remember, we've talked about Ron Moorhead. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was the guy that captured the Sierra Sounds and the Sierra Nevadas with Alan Berry, the reporter. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're very well known now. You can hear them on the Internet. And this was about the same time they would have been out there. And it has that kind of sing-song, yeah, you know, right. for lack of a better word, Chinese uh, huh. Lego. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, but anyway, uh, th those have been examined, and uh, uh, a lot of credibility has been put on those particular tapes. But that was the kind of stuff that they were hearing at night okay. in the area. You know, in the uh, minute we have left, um, does, has anything been happening there, you know, lately in that part of the world? Uh, that I <clears throat> don't know. Her, uh, uh, I know her daughter had been back several times mm -hmm. in the area as a Bigfoot researcher. Right. Uh, Sally had not gone back. She was going to uh, get a reunion with some of the old friends, and I don't know if that ever came about. I'm sure it did. It's been several years since I heard the interview. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that whole area, uh, Washington State, Oregon, is really a hotbed mm -hmm. for all this stuff. It's right. just that it's it's so interesting that you look at the, you know, you, you almost can't look at a straight Bigfoot report right. anymore. Mm -hmm. There's the weird stuff that seems to follow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just remember that photograph. Someone took, it's probably two years now, where they, <clears throat> they took, it was in California, they took a picture of a haunted house during the day. Yeah. And you can see, you know, someone in the window. Someone is in the window, okay? And then on top of it, you can see a UFO. And they, you know, they had them both studied and so on and so forth. They can't explain why these things were in the picture. Unless they have that, and it was just kind of you know, almost too much of a coincidence. You'd mm. see a ghost in the UFO. Switcherino, thanks very much. Anything else going on there? You saw Spider Man, uh, right? Did we talk about that off air, right? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm I'm working on my uh, you know I'm going to be doing a talk at the Mothman yes. Festival in oh, September. Yeah, that's right. All right. So I'm, to... I'm gathering all my right. going through all my archives. Okay, we're going to give you a round of applause. Yes. Stuff because Switch has been called on to speak at the Mothman Festival this fall. Down there in That's right. How, how many minutes do you have to speak? Uh, well, it's uh, probably about 
45, 50 minutes, uh, leave a few minutes for questions and time for the next speaker to get on. Wow. Will you be wearing the Mac Maloney Military X-Files t-shirt? Of course you will. Know. Well, you know what? I, I might actually wear a white shirt and tie and, and slacks and kind of, you know. How dare but, you? But, okay. uh, you know, okay. kind of look kind of classy, but I, I, it's very likely that I'll, I'll drop uh, Mac Maloney's Military X-Files a couple times. Okay. All right. You know, we could see that. You know, be better than sending. You know, in my head, I was thinking, send in some girls in bikinis and have it, you know, written on them. Okay, <laughs> it starts as, and they sit there and listen, and they're the ones that ask the questions after forty-five minutes. All right, well, if it's forty-five minutes, you should get to work there, my friend. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I've got He's a lot of be uh, famous, a lot okay. of ideas, and going uh, like I say, I'm going through the archives. And you know what's good is that you know, once you write it, okay, you can appear anywhere, mm-hmm. you know, and just do the same gig over and over. It's yep. perfect. Oh yeah, sure. So yeah. We'll take uh, 10%. We'll book you, okay? Okay. We'll book Sounds you to good. the show. Thank you, Switcherino. My pleasure. All right. See you later. Good to see you guys. There you go. See you, Steve. Thanks. Switcherino. Wow. That's interesting. The thing is, is when I hear people who like have moved into a haunted house or into a house, you know, that UFOs, they were Bigfoot's looking in the window, how long would you stay? I'd get in the car immediately. And leave. Yeah, but wouldn't you put on your researcher hat and kind no, of? Oh no take, way! No, man. no. <laughs> Come no on, way. you're Mac no. Maloney. You can no, do, no. You would do that. No. You just bolt. Get in the car and get out of there. Maybe go back with you know a hundred or so people, and see what's going what? on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you oh, don't man. have to do it like the movie. You know, they go back and say, "Hey, I'd, I'll be right back. I'm going up in the attic just to check things up." You know. I would want to hang out and see this for myself. Really? Come on. Yeah. What do you think of that there, Brown Little Black Eyed Kid? He's willing to go right yeah. into the dark forest. Come on over, we'll be friends. <laughs> See? It's that easy. To Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, this is the end of the show. We better hurry up yet. Thank you very much, Commander Cobra, for joining us. Yeah, Commander. As always. Okay. Thank you. Rob Beckhausen, Wars Boring, please stay safe for the next week down there in the Murray Capital of the world. Rob was a blast, as always. Switch Reno, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you, Switch. We'll talk to you in two weeks Thanks, as guys. it turns out. Mr. Mothman. Two weeks? Okay. Two weeks, yep. Yeah. Um, and um, very famous author, Mac, Mac Sapula. For some reason, yeah. I want to say Mac. I don't know why. It was a pleasure, guys. Thanks again uh, for having yeah. me here today. The last sure. long show, I'm going to go on yeah. Amazon.com. Please do. And also, the black-eyed kid who uh, stayed for the entire show with us just about. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay. I look forward to having you. Oh, there you Thank go. you. Okay. Thank you, Thanks Creep very Show. Much. <laughs> Thanks, kid. Creep okay. Show, kid. One one will lead you out, kid. Okay, that's right. Yummy. <laughs> He's starting to get under my skin. Now. There you, oh, there you go. Yeah. Last one of the night. <laughs> really. Right. So uh, until then, this is uh, Mac Maloney for the gang and the posse saying, "Be safe, be happy, and bye bye." Okay, Kevin, for the grand.